eating some carrots on live on the air. What's up, people? Brett and Mayro's the podcast today. We got the legend. The one of the greatest fighters of all time, Ween Dog, is here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be here, dude. Thanks for having me. Uh, we have Mayhem Miller, yeah. Pride, Dream, uh, UFC, Strike Force. You fighting Bodog? Gay Pride. Bodog. Hey, um, no. <laughs> no, you never did Bodog. He just gave me a flashback of. <laughs> Bodog. <laughs> well, you you were in uh, a lot of things. Uh, you were you're you're the man, the myth, the legend. Just call me an MMA icon. Yes, because uh, that's the reality of the situation. That's true. I'm Adam Hunter. We got a great show. We got Tim Johnson calling in, who just got a huge win. By the way, he knocked out an undefeated Tyrell Fortune, who they were saying was the next heavyweight champion. Outing him, and they were like, they threw Tim to the wolves. He was on a two fight losing streak. They were like, here you go, and Tim just knocked them out in the first round, which was very interesting for him. Yeah, so totally happy for him. We're we got a brand up. new sponsor, Mayhem Martial Arts. Really? Yep. Dot com. That's the website. Yeah, I'll be sliding you a check here in uh, about fifteen well, minutes. You could slide it back to yourself. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> so um, <laughs> now, where uh, is, are you going to post videos and training videos? Yeah. Well, that's it's just being built out now. It's like fantastic coming together. There's people signing up, and I'm like already booking seminars from it. So it's like taking off. I know. Like I, I, I appreciate MMA roasted. I appreciate all you guys out there. I appreciate the fans telling me I'm a fat bastard. Thank you very much. Motivating. <laughs> He's back in the gym. <laughs> you see that? You know what's funny? Or comment. You know what? I know we're doing something right because now the <laughs> The, the comments are starting to get negative about me. So I'm like, yeah, yeah we're doing something right. So listen, because everybody was so positive, so positive. And I knew it wasn't going to last. But then suddenly people are just dredging up the past, calling me fat, saying I look old. I was just like, oh, good. My self-esteem was getting a little too high. I appreciate the yeah. haters coming out You look, look out like, there. A, like a better in shape Ben Rothwell. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's what somebody well, said. compliment. <laughs> is not doing me any favors. I, I really think that I'm looking a little old. Maybe hey, I look at you, baby face. You've I'm had, you've had, had a life of a, you've had a, a long life, though, man. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to put me out in the pasture? No, I'm just saying that you, what, you 30, 38? Fucking like, more like 32. But you've lived like the life I've of, lived like six lifetimes on yeah, top yeah, of it. So yeah. sometimes I get bummed out like but then i go you know what bro it's been a good one it's funny because you were actually keep... you were reading those comments and i was like shit because <laughs> i read some of those comments no i i had to like jump in and jump out but what were we gonna but say? i would never call you fat like, or like out <laughs> of shape my face. <laughs> no i mean i wouldn't anyway first of all you're not fat but i've seen you in a lot better shape let's just <laughs> let's just let's Look, just say this is coach mayhem okay coach mayhem right now he's okay he can eat you know i eat a hamburger at least once a week. Okay, well, the maybe first time when you were in my backyard training kids and you, and you, and you took off your shirt. <laughs> Look, <laughs> you posted an Instagram video that made me glad that I don't have access to my Instagram because when I saw me turn around, oh my goodness, bro. But I was like, but it just, I'm just so I used the body to you just of being melted, like, I know, jacked. tall and skinny and jacked. <laughs> and, but then I'm like, well, you, you were a year and a half in jail. Sitting in a box. Sitting yeah. in a box. Not in a better box studios, in a box box. Probably, yeah, yeah. and you weren't getting, I mean, you were training. Listen, all all, push up, pull up, sit up. And that, what kind of was, food were you eating? Oh my god, fat boy! Like all they do is a bologna sandwich. You know, let's just. I'm trying to stay away. No, but stay how away much? But, but that. that's fucked up. I mean, first of all, they know how important nutrition is. Oh, okay. So and which how politician much, how is much, gonna? How which much politician more would it be? Is gonna make their platform feed the criminals? <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen. But how much more money would it cost them to give you guys healthy food? Nothing. It would actually probably be cheaper. So then yeah. what's it's the most efficient system I ever seen like they can pump out like uh, you know uh, I don't know 20,000 bologna sandwiches a day I mean how how much harder would it be to chop up some apples and you know what I mean grilled chicken so I, anyway, I don't know I don't know but but that actually motivated you to work, work out a little bit a little bit yeah I, that, you know what it cuz cuz I can't you know I can't I got to tell the truth yeah I, you know I'm heavy I'm heavy. You know, my dad called me out. 250? No, no, not that. Come on, bud. What's crazy is that. I'm not made of lead. Well, here's what happened. 215. Here's what happened. Here's what was like. 
sometimes you'll say things that'll stick for me for a couple days. So there was a fight in, uh, we were watching Polaris at my house. Yeah. I was showing you the five on five jiu jitsu. And, and there was one fight, I forgot the guy's name. Um, You're talking about the jiu jitsu matches that we were yeah. watching at your house? And there was a guy, a Brazilian guy who looked like he hadn't trained <laughs> in three, four years. But he was like a third or fourth degree. Black no, the guy's a fantastic. Fredson Paxal, I think yes. his name is. He yeah. was a fi fighter in Strike Force, great fighter. But it looks like he he just got off the couch. Ooh. Right? I mean, Ooh. I'm not putting him down. What did I say? Well, he was fighting a guy, C Craig Jones. He just ripped. That looked like he, <laughs> a, a, a white Adonis. Like, like he just hadn't just left the gym, right? Beast, sexy man. Yeah. So, so I'm trying to, so I'm like, mayhem, man. You should do this, man. You, you should get into this thing. I can make a phone call. We can get people with the fans. And you're like, yeah, but I think I'm closer to that guy right <laughs> <Yeah>. now <laughs> than to that yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm closer to this. Brazilian librarian than I am to that monster beast. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, the reality is, is that like, what if I train for six weeks? Well, I'm I'm in shape. I like look sexy, but you know, I, I realize uh, what what this uh, period of simple activity. You know what I mean? So, are you starting to train? Yeah, yeah. So but you said yeah, yeah, but question. like, what do you mean? I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I. No, I haven't kicked it up into next level. I'm still Coach Mayhem. I got like six guys to look after. So being Coach Mayhem, and I picked up a new guy, uh, a, a new student this past week, LAPD officer. Nice. <laughs> I got a question. Yeah. yeah. If you take a long time, just like off of like jujitsu, can you get demoted? <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've, I'm a blue belt, but I haven't you know trained what? in like a year. I feel like I'm a negative white belt. Well, only yeah, but only like a second degree black belt can demote you. Okay. And I'm a second degree black belt, so <laughs> you're now a white belt. I'm sorry. I deserve it, dude. I deserve really? it 100%. You haven't been back training. Well, I was at a point at 10th Planet where I, like every week I'd have these crazy pinched nerves in my back Ooh. because I'm a guard player. I like to throw up triangles a lot. So, you're... so I just took a, I took some time off and I haven't been back since, but I'm getting ready to go back pretty soon. I'm just worried about my back, ah. you know, because that's my biggest problem with me. Well, right. I can show you some exercises to like kind of like strengthen that. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Uh, it, there's, it's kind of rehabilitation if you have a constant injury like that. Yeah. And really what you need to do is strengthen those muscles outside the jiu-jitsu room mm -hmm. in order that you don't get that injury. Usually, like, you can fix any type of, like, reoccurring injury by, like, focused. And it's not, like, hard-ass weightlifting. It's, like, these little tiny uh, things to not aggravate your back. Like, you have to do lightweight, low rep, and... Uh, strengthen the entirety of the muscle that right. way you don't keep getting that pinched nerve what does when does the injury occur when just when during you, during rolling no i know sparring. but and what can you remember what specific instance it's always whenever whenever i'm on the bottom mm. like on the ground yeah but you just, pull guard i pull guard i normally have people on top of me and that's just it just it sucks i have to tap out or just tell them to stop because well, i can't do anything is it when move. they're trying to pass so that your legs are up or when you're doing a high guard or um, I'd say it's a lot of it is when they're in like in side control and I'm doing like these weird like twisting motions. Out. Yeah, like shrimping motions. Mm. It's a lot of that. But we can probably focus on this after. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, 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 this is I, don't why, I don't know why Dr. Mayhem just uh, put on his lab coat. But maybe you can put videos it. like that on your website. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, there's going to be a whole, you know, I, I'm focusing on some jujitsu videos first. I'm going to start. Uh, you know, showing some technique. Any Joshua Fabian parody videos? Or the, collabs? What the hell is that? Listen, D Diego's gotta... coach? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I forgot that's his name. By the way, Diego Listen, hit me up. I'm going to get a tattoo of that guy on my chest, I think. Diego hit me up, actually, to post that the guy did one of those, like, punching machines and the broke. The machine exploded? And broke it. Wow. Yeah, like, he used his mind to break the machine. Uh, Are so, you sure you didn't just have Diego go and plug it really quick after <laughs> I punched it? I don't know what happened, but Diego was seriously was like, can you please post this? And I was like, Diego, whatever you need. Did man. you? Of course I did. Nice. I'm, Diego's my I would have retweeted yeah. that. Of yeah. course. I mean, yeah. whatever Diego wants me to do, I'm going to do for Diego. Nice. Yeah. But uh, so... Uh, I had a show last night at a strip club. <laughs> Why are you look? How does your wife feel about you hanging out in the strip club? I, first of all, I didn't all know. All the time, I had no. I don't hang out all the time. All the time. Like nine out of ten of your stories on this show are you at a strip club <laughs> a with a them. bunch of dudes. This is finger blasting your butt. No, no, wait, that's him. That's sorry. This, I, this I is got, complete bullshit. I got confused, I, this guy hit me up on Facebook. Hey, want to do my show in Palmdale? Is a comedian. A comedian. Right. Paid a couple. You could pay some decent money. So I was like, for like a Monday. So I. Just so I drive out there, uh, and then it's a bikini bar. Nice. So it's not like a strip club. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's, so, that's classier. So I go on stage, and I got to say, like, 
People were making Wait, it rain on me while were you, I was were on stage. Were you on the main stage? Yeah, I was on the main nice. stage. The girls weren't even dancing. They weren't even there. I hadn't started yet. The girls okay. were not even there. But I'm on stage, and it's just like they were a small crowd, but they were loud and going crazy. And then while I'm on stage, someone's like, I like that joke, and throws money at me, right? Dollar bills. And at first, I'm like, I'm not picking up these. I'm not gonna pick up dollar bills. <laughs> I'm not doing that. This is not, I got pride. I'm not doing that. I look down, I see a hundred nice. and a couple twenties. I was like, damn fucking right. I'm like, I think I made more money fucking getting tipped than I did on the actual show. <laughs> So, and it reminded me of like one of my best sets ever was that was at a strip club like 15, 12 years ago in Arizona. And I tell comics all the time, people are like, am I going to make money at comedy? I'm like, first couple of years, you will not make any money, but you'll get paid in pussy. Uh, and when I say that, and I say that in the nicest way possible, you will get women that you'll never get. Yeah. In, for in, me. in real life, because of, <laughs> because yeah. you're on stage, people are focused on you. You'll never get these girls' attention in real life. You, it's it's a it's a powerful thing. It's it's sexy as a fighter. Did you got that? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, there's a weird like that. I mean, if I remember correctly, uh, the more aggressive of the species was the gay dudes. They really were into it. Really? Yes. They're like, oh my god, I saw you in your speedos. <laughs> And you just oh, uh, and you choke the guy unconscious. Oh my god! And then, what and then did you like say? in Vegas, a guy would walk up to me like, "Hey, mayhem," and I was like, "Hey, what's up, bro? Look like a big like like Mexican, bro." Hey, uh, let me suck your dick. And I was like, "Wow!" I was like, "No!" <laughs> yeah. Did you did you laugh? Like, yeah, I laughed. It was LOL. I'm not a homophobe, but I'm but not into that. But it's so. uncomfortable though. Like, I, I'm definitely. Yeah. Why? And like walking in public with this out loud to say that. And, and you're right. I mean, it's it's anytime you're elevated on a platform, right? But like, gay guys can do that. Like, if you up to a girl, you were women like, too do but that. if you were like, hey, let me eat your pussy, like you get oh, no. slapped or yeah. fucking Harvey thrown. Weinstein. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck but, that. but girls were uh, now now girls too. Yeah, girls. Are, Girls are more low key about it. They won't come right up in your face like that. I mean, I'm sure you know from back in the day. But the thing is, is that when you had it, you had all you had a lot of these Asian women, right? So you always no, but that, they're but, but they're, they're, they're like notoriously just, not aggressive. Oh, yeah. Uh, so how did they? How no, did you well, steal no, the deal? They're, no, they're look. All women are aggressive, but yeah. they do it in like this jungle tiger way. Like they're yeah. crawling through the gra hot. Tall, the Asian girls know, do all of them. Every kind of woman. Okay, when, women are like this. Like, men, we're like silverbacks. We just go after what we want. You know what I mean? We shake the tree, coconuts <laughs> fall down. Suddenly, you're a happy man, right? Women are like tigers in the bush. Mm -hmm. They're just hiding. They're hunting, mm -hmm. right? They snip. Them. Maybe they'll flip their tail a little bit and get you like, wait, what's that over there? And while you're looking at their tail, kablam! It's kind of true. Right? Now, there, now you told me at my house that one of the worst <laughs> moments uh, of your life was when you, you fucked up a tensum. <laughs> well, no, I had a tensum one time. Okay. But another time. Wait, how did you have a tensum? Uh, it, it, it all was pretty, the, the key is to have like a crazy girlfriend that's into that. Yeah. And ten? Like, how do you yeah. get ten girls to just, I mean, how Look, do you even like. Look, man. I've had three, and I was, the, I was, I mean, I have ADHD, but 10? The MySpace terms of service were a lot different back then. <laughs> you could really market yourself a lot, but how a lot did better you, than Facebook. But what did you line them all up? Yeah, no, stack them, you know, about yay high. Really? Oh, yeah, the smell, man. Wait, I hold on. So you had first 10, thing comes to my mind. is it 10 Asian girls? <laughs> nah, you know, assorted like a flavors of whatnot. Yeah, they all formed up, you know what I mean? I pretty much only made out with the head, you know? Let's go back to the and smell. And then the leg. Describe that. Yeah. <laughs> What was the smell like? It was just like? Uh, potpourri, you know, <laughs> Wait, of different on. assorted right. flavors. So you're making okay. out with one. Are they making out with each other? Oh yeah, it was a, it was a it was a wild one. So it was yeah. bisexual girls. It was a little bit. It was definitely one of the most pornographic things that ever happened to me. I, and you know, <laughs> and looking back at it is uh, is uh, would you again? wipe a little tear in my eye? But I'm all right. It's How many too, nuts did you bust? It's too complicated. All of them. <laughs> Yeah, like every one that I had. Yeah. You must have came like so, what three, four times. Like you kept yeah, going. Like um, an, I mean, I almost hit a personal best of of eight, which that, no, yes, eight. I, look, man, I'm. Does I'm that mean two you. girls were unfulfilled? Because that ten yes, some. I know. You're still gonna let Sorry. down, really? Yeah, I mean, and I listen. I, the, the last couple were like. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Busting dust. What know? stimulants were going on uh, in that I room? mean, mostly just uh, my erotic scent. Now, you this know? was your Strike Force days or UFC days? Yeah, or? around that, yeah. And, and you know, it was just, uh, I don't know. Did, yeah, uh, it's funny to think back on that. Did Uncle Creepy walk in jerking off? Yeah, I wish. 
Nah, I should have. If I had his number, he would have. You know what? Hey, we got to have him back on the show, by the way. Like, I, I, there's so many unresolved questions. After we left the show and people were like tweeting and texting about it and whatnot, I was like, man, I, you know what? I, I really didn't take advantage of the moment that I, we had him on where I could just ask. Well, he's under the death. table right now. Yeah, oh, there he is. So, Wait, uh, stop jerking off, baby. <laughs> Yeah. So, but so what? Um, what, <laughs> so it reminds me though. So I did a show one time in Arizona, and it was actually at a strip club, and it was the only time I got <laughs> another. A, stuff. I got an Count encore. No, this was the Count first story. Down. This is the first story. This is the. F- I just oh, inter- I just interrupted it. Pain pussy. Okay, no, no, okay. I, I like the interruptions. So, <laughs> so it was one of those things where. Uh, they, it went so well they wanted an encore, which is like as a stand-up comic, you, it, 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 bands like, want encores because you save your your big hit. Yeah. As a comic, you did all your your stuff and then you're just gonna let everyone down. Mm. So, which is what happened. But <laughs> it was kind of like my tensum. But, yeah. but I went out there and then there was like Miss Nude World was there. She was one of the dancers, which yeah. I, I later found out there were a lot of Miss Nude Worlds. It's not, oh, yeah. it's not like one. Oh, you mean it's not the ultimate penultimate champ? It's no, it's kind of like being a Muay Thai champion or something. Oh, There's yeah. just a lot. She world. just had like a little belt that with fifties. It wasn't it. the whole world. It was more like you know Disney World. But anyway, so it was one of those things. So then I ended up. She ended up bringing me on stage and pouring like wax on me. What? Yeah, like <laughs> if, and but it, it wasn't like the stripper like wax. wax. Yeah, but it doesn't hurt. It didn't hurt. Oh, it's like sex wax. It's sex wax. Right. <laughs> wait, wait, you you use sex? I wax? actually had to Google this because I was gonna use my candle as like wax as a kink. <laughs> yeah, I've done it. But I've read that you can't just do it with any candle. No, because wait, you've done that. Real. Wait, what happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What happened oh, yeah. with you? Blistering. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There's actual sex candles you have to buy. Yeah, you gotta get the like uh, low low burning point strategy, different strategy. Yeah. yeah, a lot of science involved. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then, uh, so then I ended up like going home with her and like she poured it on your junk. Yeah, on my junk. Whoa. And then I got the bartender's number. Wait, were you butt naked on the stage? No, like or she she pu- pulled she, up she, her. She like my boxer. She went like this because everyone's like, bring him on the comic. I was like, I need a volunteer. And everyone volunteered me. Nice. And I'm always like, well, I can't let the, the people down. You know. <laughs> and, a lot of mistakes been made and, using that logic. So then I ended up uh, going home with her and like. You ever do anal by accident? Like you're hitting a doggy style and you, you shift out and go back in and then you're in the... No? Well, that happened with me. So, uh, uh, oh, my bad. I thought you like... No, sl- you ever like doing doggy style with a girl? I thought you dropped then- a ketchup bottle and slipped on the kitchen floor. No. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> no, you ever like... What? <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no. That anal by accident? Okay, now I'm on you. All right, so you ever like... You're hitting a doggy style then you pull out sort of and you pull, try to put it back in yeah. and then you get the, the butthole. Been there, but- You've done that? Come on, standard. Standard? Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, if you're vigorously, you know what I mean? You got to be very sensitive to your partner's needs. Bro. Right, right. You can't be just throwing around that fuck stick wall willy-nilly. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So that's can't what be happened. swinging that dick too hard. And then I ended up uh, getting the bartender's number, who was the hottest one there. A lot of times at strip clubs, the bartender's the hottest one. I mean, but did she have any accolades, like the world champ? No, she wasn't a world champion. But oh. I went back to see her again, and then actually, like, I hadn't hooked up in a while. And then she, like, went down on me, and I came in, like, eight seconds. And she nice. was like, when was the last time you got laid? Like, that's not what you want to hear after, 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 after you nut. Yeah, and yeah. then, uh, yeah. Yesterday so, with the candle wax? So then I ended, up, I ended up driving home, and I got three tickets in the, in the home. <laughs> and I still didn't care, because it was like, I was still on that high. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the video of the stripper who fell off the top of a 50-foot tall? Yeah, and now like, she's, like, stripper. famous. She, like, broke her jaw, and then she continued to twerk. And that's a dedicated set. stripper. Yeah. Yeah, that's a dedicated chick you know, right there. the show must go on. The show um, must go on, dude. So, uh, anyway, uh, by the way, speaking of internet things, before we get to our guest, what do you think of that, <laughs> what do you think of that bully? The kid who got bullied? I just saw, <laughs> like, I couldn't watch it, like, the just a 20-second video I of can't it. watch it either. Yeah, like I, I didn't understand exactly what happened. So, all right. So, there was, there was so a kid. There was recap, a, a because nine-year-old a lot of people kid, haven't seen it. A nine-year-old kid who has some type of dwarf dwarfism. dwarfism yeah. I mean, um, his head is, is pretty large. I can understand. So, he was like crying and saying that the kids were bullying him and he wanted to kill himself. And it was really. So, he made this video, and Brad Williams, the comic who had the same, who has the same thing, mm. he saw it and was like, oh, we're going to raise money for you to go to Disney World. So he reposted it, and then Hugh Jackman reposted it, and all of a sudden the kid raised six hundred thousand dollars. Right? What the fuck does this kid need? No. So then it came out that 
the kid has some pictures of him like giving people the middle finger. There's one of him saying the N word. Oh. Uh, there was one of him like there was like the kids, the kid, someone that a parent that went to the school said he's the one that starts all the trouble. So we canceled the dwarf. So, no. So then, turn, then people were saying he was 19 years old. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Even that, better that he finessed everybody and that. So then it turned out he wasn't 19 years old. He really is nine. There was a big debate on whether he was 19 years old or not. And uh, so he really is nine, but he does have money. But there was all these pictures of him wearing like Supreme and like money. Well, like, I know you're like, balling no. out of control. Yeah. You'd be at the strip club doing your job. <laughs> so, so, but, I, but there's a lot of problems here. Number one, our, our bullying is terrible. He shouldn't be getting bullied, all right? The parents should be on that. But Teachers. is it 600 grand terrible? I've been bullied my whole life and nobody just hands me over 600. You had a show. You were giving people $1,000 for uh, yeah, yeah, beating yeah. up bullies. Yeah, so, exactly. but also, why are we throwing money at him? Like how That's is a that? Solution. How is that going to fix anything? It's to make us feel better for yeah. his problems. Exactly. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. like he's getting bullied. Well, here's thirty five thousand dollars to go to Disneyland. <laughs> so why do you need that much money for Disneyland? Listen, bro, have you seen now? how much the freaking Star Wars gear cost? Yeah, it's expensive. So then somebody wrote like a really funny thing. I posted on my Instagram of uh, so so if we could put up uh, or put put up my uh, Twitter page MMA Roasted. And or my my Instagram Adam comedian, this guy goes, yo, this black guy goes, hey man, my uh, my cousin, my little cousin, man, man is getting bullied, y'all. Hit up the Cash App. <laughs> and the kid's like, obviously like the Venmo me, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Venmo me for this, my short cousin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> like, pretty was, clever. I thought that was really. But funny. I don't even understand. So is that kid getting on the money? I don't yeah, even understand. He's, yeah, he's getting six hundred grand. I mean, unbelievable. Listen, I, you know what though? <laughs> I would think you, he's Would you it. trade six hundred G's? Uh, to be four foot. Uh, no, one. no, but I just yeah. think that we're like, it's well, a, I mean, it's a, I'm it's, just that's saying. a very American problem of like, my kid has problems, here's money. Yeah. And coming from somebody who had a lot of issues growing up, and I'm sure you can relate, ah. you can relate, yeah. money does not fix problems. It, it may help with like certain therapy or cost of medication, but it doesn't fix problems. Your problems are still gonna be there, whether you have so 600 grand, I got it. whether you have no money. Yeah. You take the 600 grand, right? Two hundred fifty thousand dollars of research and development, and then the other two hundred fifty thousand dollars, well, one hundred he could just keep and play with. Yeah. But the other two hundred fifty, we build this kid a robot suit. Yeah. Okay, next level, pinky in the brain type, you know, tuxedo big man, right? Yeah. Then he can jump around and just have fun. Nobody can bully him because it's just cybertronic. Punch him in the fucking face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the one way to do it, or give right. him jujitsu lessons. Have him take Mayhem Miller's. I mean, that would help him more than anything. I'm yeah. telling you, like. As a wrestling coach, and I said over and over again, there's not one kid that ever went through the season that was like, man, I'm, I, I wish I had not done that. Yeah. Every kid, like that's, combat sports is not the answer to the world's problems, but if everyone wrestled or did jujitsu or yeah. boxing, the world would be a lot better. What's place. the best martial arts for a dwarf though? Wrestling, probably. He he's going to wrestle other dwarfs. He'll probably kill it in the 103 pound Bro. weight division okay. or whatever. You just, you just sold the TV pilot right there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, like that's the best weight class. Brad Williams wrestled. I would definitely watch Brad Williams versus this <laughs> other kid. Yeah, like I, you know, on pay per view, I would nine ninety nine on MayhemMartialArts.com. Okay, we're just gonna put nine ninety nine uh, dwarf wrestle. I know a dwarf. They will whoop Brad Williams' ass, man. Really? Oh, he was whipping regular dudes. He might whoop your ass. Oh, for he's sure. He's a purple belt. 100%. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's pretty good. Well, a lot of times when you go up against someone with a, with a handicap, you end whoa, up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You end what up with it, a 19, handicap. 19, oh, really? Well, we're going to have to take that out of no, the podcast. No, like, right? Uh, I mean, people that fight Nick Newell, who has one arm. Yeah. It's hard sometimes because he's choking you and you're, you're nah, used to fighting. Nah, but that guy's a beast anyway. Or yeah. that guy, Anthony Robles, who had one leg. Yeah, yeah. People were going for singles on him or oh. switches and they're <laughs> yeah. not. Like you got no legs. It's a lot harder to go. Plus, up against plus you got to think about it. He's on a, a weight class up. Baxter Humby, the one arm bandit. That dude was an awesome Muay Thai guy, but he was bigger than everybody because he was missing twenty five percent of his body. Yeah, <laughs> same thing with Robles. Yeah. Robles, yeah, yeah. they said, would have been about. 190, <laughs> yeah. but he was at 135. <laughs> or there was, remember that one kid, Kyle Maynard? Oh, he's great. He had no yeah. legs, no arms, and he wanted to compete in MMA. Yeah, uh, no, he's a beast. Yeah, but at speaker. the same time, I'd be a little worried about sanctioning that. You know what I mean? Just, well, they did it. He had a fight. I, oh, yeah, you're right. But you, you weren't allowed to kick him. 
Obviously. You can't, well, he's already down. Well, you can't boot peek him out of the octagon like <laughs> yeah. a field goal or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> just guillotine him and it's over. You can like catch seconds. him it's from the crowd. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's talk about the guy. That, <laughs> let's talk to a guy, Tim Johnson. Yeah. I am so happy. Then we're going to talk about the, the boxing match that went on. Bruh. Chael Sonnen had tag team BJJ over the weekend. How did that do? I, I like, Vinny, was it exciting? Not, no, you know it, was, it was. It was. Vinny, not? No. Oh. Well, because Vinny Magalish and his partner figured out a way to win without actually having to fight. <laughs> Perfect. And then he told. And then it was in Portland, and he was like, "Your city sucks." And then, <laughs> he, he goes, "You guys are ruled by Antifa, you freaking losers!" Like, I love he, it. Who said that? Vinny. Vinny's partner. Be nice. Yeah, I think it was. God, uh, anyway, Tim Johnson, how are you, man? Yeah, doing good. Doing good. How about you all? Can we not? Uh, we can't hear him. <laughs> a little bit of a Hello? technical difficulty. Just there you there, 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 there. Yeah, yeah, we're here. Tim, Thank how's it going, you. man? It's doing good. Going good. How about y'all? Now I'm so used good. to having that creepy pedophile mustache. <laughs> uh, but the beard. Why did you go for the whole beard? Um, you know, I did all kinds of different facial hairs. You know, I've done like goatees, handlebars, uh, straight. You know. Uh, brush mustache and I've never done growing a beard. So uh, I figured I might be joining the military again here within, you know, next year or so. So I might as well grow it out while I can. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Why? Why? Because we're going to go to war with Iran and you're going to join was, up? He was in the army. He's a patriot. I, yeah, I hear you. Why, why are you going to, why are you re, why are you re up? I, I don't know. Cause I was always planning to go back. I just took a little break for a little bit. I did 10 years and I want to go back and get my other 10 and get my benefits. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God bless you, man. Uh, thank you for your service. We yeah, appreciate thank it. You. Thank, thank you very much. I got to ask you about that. So you went to high school in uh, Nebraska, right? Uh, Minnesota, Minnesota, Green Minnesota, Minnesota. Then you went to the army right after high school. Uh, nope. I, went, I joined the army uh, after my stint in uh, Juco. Uh, so I was like 20 when I joined. 20 and then you went to the army then you went back to college after the army yeah then i went back then i so i was in the national guard minnesota national guard so i went back to college uh let me see i was a freshman at uh university when i was 21. <laughs> wow wow no but then after but after you did the army did you go back after the army were you like a 32 year old sophomore uh yeah no i i kept going to school because i kept changing my dang major so i finally graduated like two years ago <laughs> wow nice nice that's awesome. way to go man now i was so proud of you man because uh i've known you for years i've known you back when you were an uber driver and you were working <laughs> at a strip club in omaha yeah uh which are you <laughs> no, fargo. Then, up in fargo fargo north dakota right and then you moved to vegas uh, and I was worried because you said the one fight you lost was when you, you actually were a full-time fighter. You were better off being a part-time fighter. But then what, what made you move to Vegas and become a full-time fighter? Um, basically, uh, you know, Fargo was doing good for me. It was just I ran out of bodies. You know, big guys are hard to come by in my group. Uh, my group of heavyweights I had that they're training with, they just kind of, you know, moved on, went and did other things. And uh, when I was starting to, my main trading partner was a 185 pounder. It was starting to be like, all right, well, I got to look for something else. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us about your training camp now. Uh, like what, what, you know, what do you have uh, over there in Vegas for you? Um, I'm out here and uh, came out here, you know, cause I've been, I've been coming out here for a bunch of years before I moved out here. I was, I was coming out here during my fight camps periodically out at extreme couture here. And uh, when I finally made the move, it's, I mean, it's like a, it's a heavyweight carousel out here, man. Just like like seven, eight heavyweights every day are in there. And um, yeah, whatever, you know, pick your poison. Each has their own, what, uh, something that they're best at. So, you know, if you want to work on somebody who can kick you in the head, oh, we got that. Someone who's going to knock you out in one punch, we definitely have that. You know, we got yeah. grapplers, we got everything. It's kind of kind of nice variety of different uh, different bodies that are in here. Who would, you, who would you say is your primary training partner? Like, well, you know, who really ups your game? Um, right now, probably this camp, it was, uh, kid, uh, uh, uh probably France, France Mar. Um, hmm. like he, he was there quite a bit, uh, Chris Thompson. Um, and then, uh, towards the end of my camp, about midway through the camp, uh, Francis made his way back here. So getting some rounds in with Francis definitely ups your, uh, yeah, what ups was your it? confidence level. Well, by the way, when he says, <laughs> says Francis, it's talking about Nganu, who's like yeah. the number two heavyweight in the world. I mean, does it, that guy... Were you taking like you, you guys sparring? How bad were your head eggs? How are you doing against him? Did he? I mean, what's that like? He hit. I mean, he hits hard. He hits like a mat truck. Even like training. Um, and he's he's probably the strongest human being I've ever freaking grappled with. It's crazy. Um, now he's starting to get like now he's really starting to get wrestling figured out. So he's even more dangerous. <laughs> so wow. that used to be my only. That used to be like my only thing that I could 
you know, maybe I could wrestle him to the ground and then I'm good to go. But now, like, you can't, he's got good takedown defense now. So that's kind of, so now I just got to take my beatings and get my shots in when I can. Now, would you say that your success, like, I mean, undoubtedly has to do with him, you know, iron sharpens iron. But uh, apart from him, what about your coaches? Like, what do you work on? Uh, what did you work on for this last fight that, like, you know, translated to the success? Um, this this fight when we were watching film or you know watching tape, I guess I don't know what you want to call it nowadays. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> old guy. Um, I guess <laughs> uh, we saw that you know no one's really in all of Tyrell's fights. No one's really really pushed him backwards. He's always been the one that kind of pushing forward. But when the few times he has pushed backwards, uh, he goes straight back and like put his hands down. He he, he wasn't very good at uh, fighting backwards. So I wanted to maintain the center of the cage and make sure that I was applying pressure the whole fight and ended up working out. I was so happy because I was really worried about you in this fight. I'm not going to lie <laughs> because you're let, you've been knocked out twice in the last two fights. And I was like, oh, no, they're, they're, making, a, they're, they're making an example out of you. They're making, they're, they're making you into a stepping stone. I was like, no, no, no. But then when I saw you come out there, there was a fire that hasn't been in there the last two fights. Like, you wanted it. Uh, yeah, no, that's a shame. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a, you're 100% on that one. Um, yeah, no, I had, I definitely had a chip on my shoulder for this fight. Um, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that I was being utilized as a stepping stone and I was not going to let that happen. <laughs> no. And they were like, I remember when they were, even during the fight, they were like, Tyrell fortune is the future, not just in Bellator, but in all of MMA. And they weren't even talking yeah. about you. They were like, <laughs> and this fucking weird guy with the beard is going to get the shit beaten out of him in three seconds. And, uh, you went out there and I mean, you knocked him out. I've never seen you so happy. Uh, that, that was the happiest. I, by the way, I mean, and, and I know you and your girlfriend, by the way. How happy was she? Uh, yeah, she was pretty happy. Uh, uh, she broke her uh, she broke her ankle a while back. Had had ankle surgery, and she's like, I think I might have rebroke it from jumping up and down. Oh, he's got oh. the he's got the sweetest, hottest little blonde girlfriend, and he's like this like <laughs> it's almost like the bad guy in Popeye. Like he's like this Bluto. Bluto. He's this guy that like I don't know how you. And she's like the sweetest thing, yeah. uh, which is uh, now. Did, now, are you working at the strip clubs in Vegas? By the way. No, I, I haven't been. Um, but after, hopefully, I don't have to be. Uh, I don't like long layoffs, but I do like staying busy. Uh, so in between fights, I go back to the Midwest and go work on the go work some agricultural stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah Last uh, last fall, I went back worked a couple weeks, and what uh, you depending mean? if I have a fight coming up, Grow I'll probably be working this spring. But can you, can you please expand on this? What yeah. kind of agriculture? Are you, are stuff? you growing soybeans or what? <laughs> um, yeah, soybeans, corn. Um, I, I put down. I, I applicate fertilizer nice. in the field. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty clever. Wow, yeah. You're just, <laughs> this guy's a man's man. I know. Yeah. Like, I, this dude is. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, if I, there was somebody that I would want to uh, dig a ditch with, it'd be this guy. So no more Uber driving, too? No more Uber driving. Although when I first moved out here, I did do Uber Eats. So <laughs> I tried to bump up in the world, but it didn't work out. <laughs> now, now, look, man, I, tell the truth, because Did I know we? a few times I got my Uber Eats order and, like, fries are missing. <laughs> The motherfucker drank my damn soda. <laughs> did did has that ever have you done that? Yes. So stupid. No, no, I haven't done that, but I do know that you definitely want to you want to order from places that that put like little stickers or they like seal the shit up so you can tell if the seal's been broken. Yeah. Like you gotta make sure you order from them places because I know for a fact that people do that as well. And I know for a fact that half my milkshake was gone. <laughs> Pretty pissed. Now um now the Congo fight, that was the first fight that I the, how hard did he hit you? Uh, you know, honestly, that one, that was weird. Um, like I went in for like when I remembered that, cause I was still in there. Like I was, I wasn't out for that at all. It just kind of like fell over. I don't know. <laughs> it was, um, cause I was in on a single leg and it was just kind of this little loop in this little uppercut jab thing that he hit me with on a single leg. And yeah, I just kind of fell over. And then that was that, I don't know. You know, it wasn't really a hard shot. It was kind of weird. And then, and then your next fight, were you worried uh, you got you got knocked out in the first round, which was a weird because you went in to fight someone else and they switched it on you. And then you're fighting a, a Russian champion. But were you worried about your? Were you doubting your own chin at all? Were you were you started to think, oh shit, maybe I can't take a shot? 
Um, probably to a little bit, because um, you know the way I fight is I let people I, get, I let people get tired by punching me in my face. That's kind of how I've always fought. Good, good and, strategy. Um, Got me some championships. Know, it's, it's, it's a great it's a great strategy until you know your brain gives out. But yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so, but you know it, it's in the back of your mind. But I I like I said in practice, you know I'm, I'm hanging with these guys. I'm eating just as hard shots as I would be in a fight, and you know I'm recovering just fine. So from that aspect, I was like, eh, no, I'm good to go yet. Good. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you're taking Ngannou's punches, you're, you're got to be like, fuck, I can take anyone's punches. Also, how hard does yeah. Roy Nelson hit? He, that, you got to really watch that overhand still. <laughs> but now yeah. it's like, now like yeah, no, that uh, he catches me with, uh, he's got a pretty brutal uppercut that he doesn't, uh, I think, I did keep telling him he's got to use a little more often. <laughs> does he ever mess with your training habits? Because, like, I know he built a gym in his kitchen. Uh, and it's... <laughs> And it seems like he's late a lot to practice. And but Wait, like, are you joking or no, is that a serious thing? No, he did. Thing? He built a gym. Right? Ask him. Is there a gym in his kitchen, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he does. He's got a little gym there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Perfect. No. I'm not joking. There's a gym I in his kitchen. I believe you. No, no. Um, but is it hard? Because Roy Nelson seemed like the kind of guy that would, like, not study and get an A on the test. He seems like the <laughs> kind of guy. Like, is it hard to sometimes not fall into his patterns of training? No, um, we've like uh, as training as a uh, as a teammate, I guess, a training partner. Um, we've we've been lucky enough that we've had fights on opposite schedules. So anything that I need, like he'll he'll work in my opponent type stuff, and vice versa with me for him. Um, that's awesome. So you know, it's always we generally. I think that's kind of a lot of people in our gym too. It's kind of well, let's uh, even when I'm like in this fight camp, I'm trying to do something with one of my guys. But since I fight sooner. They're like, no, no, man, let's work on your stuff. Like, okay. <laughs> oh, good. No, I'm so happy for you, man. Because you're you're genuinely, he was 5-2 and two in the UFC. They cut him after a win. Or he, I was like, what the fuck? They probably didn't like that fucking mustache. The guy's, the guy's, <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's an army veteran. He was ranked number 12 in the world yeah. and, and, and driving for Uber. I was like, you would never find the guy on the Lakers. The worst guy on the Lakers who never gets any fucking thing is making millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> and and it, would, it would really piss me off because I'm like, Tim Johnson's an American fucking hero and, uh, and, and needs to be praised more. Well, call your like, congressman. I, I, I will. Yeah. So I'm, I'm so happy. And also, I'm so happy because it finally, like, I feel like you finally got your just due. And I don't want you to be, you know, yeah. c complacent. Don't get cocky. Don't get cocky. No, and I'm not even complacent. I'm already I'm going to the gym today. I'm ready. Nice. To go. I'm going to be ready to go. But I'm so happy. And that was, like, the best you fought. Like, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> awesome. Uh, like, you went well, out there. Yeah, apparently, I, I just figured out on Saturday, apparently – to get a knockout, you have to throw punches. So now I'm like, all right, so I'll just throw punches more. Okay. Brilliant. Hey, what was your MOS? Yeah. Military intelligence? <laughs> uh, combat engineer. We blow oh. stuff up. Hell yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. What were the uh, odds against you for that fight? Um, He was a, a negative 900, and I was a positive six. <laughs> wow. Hell yeah. Nine, nine, <laughs> can you believe that? Nine to one, baby. Nine to <gasps> one. Yeah. Well, way to go, bro. We're big fans. We, we love it, man. Now, are you going to so marry sorry. that girl? When are you going to marry that girl? I, yep, that I am. When? Oh, hell when? Yeah. when are you going to marry her? When? Uh, they'll, probably, they'll probably be this summer. Oh, uh, good. Because she's, she, you guys are such a cute couple. Like, she's, this guy's yeah, a freaking I think, old I think so too. No, yeah. he, he comes to my shows and I just fuck with him all the time. Nice. With, with his girlfriend. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to be in Vegas next week. You in Vegas next week? I'm in Vegas next week. I got shows at the uh, Strat from Monday to Sunday. I'd love to see you. Awesome. Absolutely. I'll be there. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it, man. Keep up the good work. Yep. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. All right. I was Tim Johnson. Hell yeah. That guy's great. Fuck bro, him. damn, bro. Just keep coming with the hits, Adam. Way to go booking the show. Nine to one. <laughs> Nine to one underdog. Just crushes the dude. Are you freaking joking? Is it that time? Uh, is Would it you, time? Uh, were you ever a 9 to 1 underdog? Uh, nah. They always thought I was going to win, and then I had some. A lot of times I was the nine and one overdog and lost. <laughs> Against who? Uh, 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 Trig. Hey, I. Uh, I uh, that's, he was an underrated. You know what? And I saw that you were going to ask about. You know, let's talk about the boxing fight, and I'll work that in. Well, I wanted to show you. I want to ask you oh. Mayhem Miller entrance on YouTube. What? I got. Uh, I got to ask you about this. I one got entrance. so many entrances. I know, but this one's one of my favorite. Which? Uh, listen. The one where Gus make... Johnson said you almost got knocked out by the girl. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Mayhem Miller entrance. 
There's like two of them. There's two major ones. You come out as like a priest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no. An angel. I didn't see an that angel. One. Is that what it was? Sort of. C- couldn't you just tell Listen, me? Listen, all of them were like meant to. Be, all my entrances were kind of meant to be separate art pieces. Right. You know what I mean? I as understand. part of the the whole thing was an art piece, but there was one part, the entrance part, I viewed as like kind of a like a, I'm telling a story. All right. So tell me about this story because I, yeah. I, I I'm, I'm genuinely kind of intrigued but confused by this. So <laughs> well, that was the point. That was Miller, the whole point. I think it's probably Strike Force entrance because uh, there's two of them. The, the one that always comes up is the one with the Japanese girls who were underage. Classic. Uh, Classic Which I feel underage. weird even, like, even... Uh, yeah. Especially, like, uh, being a, a father of a daughter. Like, well, I feel like weird, years. like, posting that, because I'm, like, posting, knowing that... I wish I didn't know No, were, but, but the thing is, is that there was nothing... About, yeah, it was totally... It. Yeah, it was nothing sexual, but it is a, kind of a funny backstory that, you know, I, in my head, was like, yeah, sexy Japanese... And then the Japanese people were like, no, no, it was just... Give them regular actual schoolgirls. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, okay. You well. said your corner was checking them out. There. Oh, everybody was. Yeah. Who, who was your corner? Um, King Mo. <laughs> I know. King Mo was up in their face. Well, sometimes it also I Asian name girl, names. Asian women. I hate to say it, but sometimes it's hard to know if they're like. 17 or 40 bro listen i never thought i would yeah. be racist until uh <laughs> this chinese lady sneezed on my neck at cbs recently bro bro with the coronavirus bro i know and then i like felt a little racist really you know i mean but also sneezing in somebody's direction oh yeah yeah i'm really not... supposed to go to china next week to Come wuhan on. No. I, I've been there before. <laughs> Let's send you, I've bro. I've been to Wuhan. They gave me a smoke machine. With, they, they, they didn't really understand. They were like, oh, no, I'm a stand-up comic. And they don't, it's not even called It's called comedy. American American talk? American talk show. Talk show. It's American, you're talking show, right? <laughs> then they're like, oh, you, they, they were like a band or something. I'm like, no, no, a comic. So then they give us, a, they're like, we have to give you smoke machine. Who like, booked you? <laughs> I don't understand how you keep getting in these adventures. You do that at a strip club or at like an Asian meat market with damn bats and and, <laughs> and, and, and naked chickens. Dude, I go out there. I'm like, hey, nice to be here. Smoke everywhere. Yeah, like, and like, nobody speaks English. No one speaks English. Really? I swear to God. Oh, you're I have, making shit up, I, I have the I have the video. It's on my Instagram somewhere. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. And I'm like, I can't fucking breathe. I'm like, as if the air is not bad enough in this country. Now there's a fucking smoke machine. Was there a translator there, like, translating your jokes? <laughs> Luckily, like, if there happened to be one. Yeah. But, yeah, but it was not like a planned translator. And a it was deaf just, one right next to it. Doing somebody, the sign language. They, yeah. somebody who happened. But Asian people are the nicest. Nice is because like they'll never heckle or boo. Mm-hmm. They'll watch and record and then clap at the end. Mm-hmm. But like even if they're like, they're not laughing, they're intrigued. Like they're the most polite people you'll ever meet. You in your actually life. been to Wuhan? I've been to Wuhan, Xi'an. Why do uh, I keep hanging out with you? <laughs> no, this is three years ago, oh. four years ago. Probably you were the alpha carrier. What's cr- <laughs> you probably showed that? You pa- probably patient zero. Yeah, you're the one who gave it to everybody. <laughs> What's crazy is that. Uh, you learn a lot about China, but one of the things you learn is that they encourage pollution. Like, I went to go put my my garbage away, and my friend's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm throwing my trash away. They're like, no, you, they want you to leave it everywhere. And I go, why? They're like, oh, because they said it creates more jobs. Someone's job is to pick up trash. I'm like... Makes perfect sense to me, dude. I mean, look, that's Trump's next plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, tossing, they said, yeah. I go, how do you guys think about Trump? What do you like? About, like, we, they, they, Does your government like Trump? They go, yeah, they love Trump. Nice. And I go, why? They go, because it shows that democracy doesn't doesn't work because the people will vote no. a fucking clown into the I swear this is what they told me that uh, you can leave it up to democracy you get Trump you know that's why they like Trump but for not the reason you think they would like Trump <laughs> <laughs> oh. anyway uh, before we get we can't get that uh, mayhem intro bro oh. everyone's seen my intros on yeah, a million but times we don't have, first of all and I get I keep getting people to ask me to, oh, this right here all right so what are you doing here what do you mean what am I doing uh, like who came up with this me Okay, so you're like, I want to come out as a as an angel. Yeah, and it kind of went with marketing. I, I did like a, a, a like a botched T-shirt deal with Tap Out, and they're like, they uh, they kind of like uh, they wanted to like uh, have you know it was back in like the affliction days almost mm-hmm. where like every ta- every shirt was like some bad tattoos. Right, so you know what I mean? Let's play on this. Every, every shirt you. was like. So you come out and you're like a first you're like a big uh, yeah something like the and, halo music and people play. are just confused right so now are you like Jesus here yeah no I wasn't Jesus I was just a guy 
who's wearing an angel robe. Okay. You know what I mean? Kind of like like my angel cosplay. Like with a, with a tap out something. shirt on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So then, and then the music changes, right? Yeah. Everybody gets hype, right? And I bust out into the <laughs> sexy t shirt. I mean, look, this is just marketing 101. Everybody who's doing the marketing today is like standing on my shoulders at this point. Then these wild girls, not professional dancers, by the way. They look pretty good. I mean, they had the thing. Uh, who came up with the dance? Me. We went, over, we went over it for a while, and I didn't expect them to be in my face like this. You told them exactly. No, you worried about getting knocked out at one point by these flying well, arms? Well, if you, if you pay attention, I think <laughs> right around the next uh, chick just turns around and tries to whack me in the face. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I now, where did you find by. these girls? Uh, I don't know. Probably at the same strip club that you do comedy at. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got their hiring pool is pretty small, you know. Did you sleep with any of them or no? All of them. Yeah. Really? really? That was the tensile night. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was disappointed? Yeah, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, like, the reality is. You know, I mean... You know, if got I cared, it. I wouldn't be me. Now, is, that, is that your friend that I met? The, or where's, where's the Hawaiian guy I met? I don't know. Jason, the guy who said it boosts you for every fight? The guy. John. John, yeah. What happened? Oh, John Schneider? He was, he was there. No, not Schneider, sure. the guy that uh, from Portland, Oregon, that gave me all the, all the, the monsters. Nice guy. Oh, Knock you're talking him. about Jimmy Knox? Yeah, yeah, Jimmy Knox. Oh, man, he's out there somewhere. Yeah, for sure. He was always with me through a bunch of fights, you know what I mean? That, that guy always take care of me. And then people always ask me to ask you about the Ariel Hawani interview. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything well, you want to that, you know, in context, it makes more sense. You know, like I had just gone through like the worst part of my life where the UFC denied my surgery claim. And like I was mad at the entire sport of MMA. And instead of like going out and like giving a measured response like I would do today, mm -hmm. you know, and, and give kind of like, a, you know, my, my take on the situation. I just went, you know what? Fuck you guys. Fuck all of this. This whole sport's fucked up. And I just went on and, you know, showed showed my ass. Like, and I, I had the excuse that, you know, I had this uh, character of Lucky Patrick yeah. Murphy, who is the perfect foil for Errol Hawani because he's like a dude who doesn't give a fuck, who like <laughs> hates everybody and mm. everything. So I just played this Lucky Patrick character to avoid talking about what was really going on in my heart which was that I felt really, you know, hurt by the whole community and everything was, like, messed up, you know? But wasn't, um, the movie was coming out. Yeah. And you, had a, a you had a decent part in it. Yeah. Um, and I had a lot to do with that. that now, <clears throat> wasn't it good promotion for the movie, though? I mean, maybe not, but I, I doubt I'm the reason why it flopped at the box office. <laughs> no, but I'm know? saying, like, but in your head, are you saying, well, I said, I'll you know, that. I might as well. Look, I, I kind of, like, was, you know, um, because I made all these disparaging comments against the brass, I was being, my, everyone was turning their back on me. I said, like, you know what? Fine, I'm gonna turn my back on you. Right. You know? And I like went bigger than, I went totally anti. I didn't try to like, you know. But there wasn't one I, person I didn't try to go at, hand it was, hand. It was everybody you were mad at. Oh yeah, and Did anyone ever try to talk you out of that? No. Oh, no. I mean, maybe, but not really because I'd already, you know, separated myself. Oh. And really, really the, the, uh, you know, if I were to have like, like uh, better guidance at that stage, I think I could have dealt with my feelings better. Right. And you know what I mean? Ha like, of course. Understood. But I didn't have anyone close to me. You and know, people so are also was, scared of you. Yeah. That's the other, you know, you're a trained of, killer. Exactly. And, you know, I was, I was my outward show was very like scary. So obviously you know, uh, people are going to have trouble calming me down or relating. Well, to I me. looked at you as like a pit bull oh, yeah. that was out of control, <laughs> yeah. but somehow oh. liked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. nice to me, but was going to bite everybody else. Well, no, because it's... you were one of the only friends that kind of like, you know, stuck by me and kind of like was like, dude, and at least tried to be my friend. But. Like, I was so angry oh, no, I, at the I remember whole I would world. tell you, I'm like, Mayhem, I like just you. I remember telling Jason, yeah. I like you. You're mm -hmm. enough. You don't need to do this. But then I would see, and you would hear me, <laughs> but then there'd be like, 
And just nine throngs of people crazy would people walk love around, mayhem. And then you mayhem. would be, say things like, yeah, fuck you. And everyone would <laughs> laugh like it was Carlin's closer, in fucking, <laughs> like 84. And I'm just like, oh, God. So the big assumption yeah. for that video for Ariel Wani when you jumped up on the desk was that you were fucked up on drugs or something. So you're, you're saying the whole reason. No, I, that, that. You know, that I, I think that's part of it for sure. Okay. Because I did. I, I, you know, I, what drugs I, were you taking? All of them. So, <laughs> but not you so, were taking crack. No, no, no. Heroin. But no, 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 no. But no, nothing Meth, hardcore. No, no. But the the problem was more my dealing with my emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, it was more that. It was more me not being able to have like an, an outlet, being injured, so no more training, yeah. and not being able to express myself through my art was like eating at me. And instead of Dealing with that in like a healthy way, I dealt with it by just lashing out at everyone. And it really, you know, it set me back. It ruined my life for a long time. And, and you know, uh, I feel like I'm beyond that. And it's like no, I, can now, I can now reflect on that and help other people. So I've been helping a lot of guys come up out of this. Also, like I'm telling you, like I, I know that like right now you're not where you want to be in your career. Yeah. But I have so much respect for you. And I, I look up to you a lot. And I'm like always like... And whenever things are getting tough on my hand, I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't sell this fucking show, or that show. And yeah. you say to me, like, Who gives a fuck? Like, I'm like, this one turned me down. You're like, so? Yeah, and I'm like, trucking, man, bro. and keep I'm like, trucking. if if you're coming back from where you are, like, I have no excuse to fucking not push forward. You know, I, you know, I think a lot, in a lot of, I've seen a lot of people not come back from where I am. Like, not where, where I was. I've seen oh, them, yeah. You know, we've both seen it. We've seen guys just go like dead and i was counting the other day i was counting like how many guys like guys i fought dead got you know what i mean who didn't come back from that dark place and it, and it makes me really uh you know compassionate towards dudes who are having a tough time right now and or you know or ladies too it's, a, it's well, a whole yeah thing. well ariel i mean i he i remember he he never liked me i made a couple jokes about him looking like toucan sam or something just some <laughs> stupid jokes right like just stupid oh, jokes i mean just like Adam. really like fourth grade jokes yeah and i remember hanging out with you and you called him and you were like you put him on speaker and you're like no adam's funny i see him do well he kills and he's like these, these aren't even jokes and this and that. He got upset. And, and, then like, I, and I was like, and you, you don't know jokes. And you were trying yeah. to broker the peace deal between yeah. me and him. Never and happened. then And then I saw him a couple times. He shit on me on Twitter. And I've always like. Really? Well, here's the thing. It's like when I, when I roast a fighter, like a fighter, a guy that could fuck me up. Like, I think he knows, like, I'm doing it in a way where I'm like, okay, try to do it in fun. And at the same time, like, you could fuck me up. When I, when I roasted him, I almost felt like I was picking on him in some way. Maybe because... No, you were. Yeah, I, like, I was... And then, no, and the same thing happened with me. Because I was just joking with him with this interview. Yeah. Where I jumped on the table. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't realize was that a lot of, like, MMA nerds totally identify with him. And, like... They were looking at me as like a bully. Yeah, but I was just to me it was all in good fun. Well, the thing is, he I was, was like, with them. well, he was also like when he when he when he when he said leave me alone, I left him alone because like I'm like I'm not gonna fuck unless somebody wants to be fucked with, I'm not really gonna fuck with them. Yeah, you know. So I mean, it's hard sometimes with a guy like John Jones who just keeps like coming up with ridiculous things. But you're the champ. You're in the spotlight. My job is to make jokes. I'm not gonna not make jokes. But with him, like, so I, I backed off with him because I'm like, this is not fun. But then when he takes shots at me, it's like, bro. <laughs> but then I, then I saw him and he's like, yo, you know, I was just kidding when I took a shot. I'm like, no, what? I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> I'm like, it's okay, man. Like, yeah, I, I don't think, look, a lot of people don't understand like comedy culture and like the, you know, it's a different world. Yeah. Like the shit, the zingers that I'll be hitting on guys at the comedy store or at a, you know what I mean? At a different show shows like in the parking lot fucking with each other is like something that if you said it in a gym like it would be a fight on oh, the yeah. mat you know what i'm saying yeah. but it's like and, and guys go at me real hard and i'm not gonna be violent towards them it's funny like it's a mental it's like mental jujitsu you gotta get out there and zing each other well i know. think also a lot of times not all the time but a lot of times when i roast colby or when i roast certain guys i'll text them the joke first and be like, hey, yeah. is it, I'll go, is it cool if I say this? And 90 and almost 100% of the time, they're like, yeah. The wheel, the Weird Al strategy? Like, that's what Weird Al always sent his songs to the band. Oh, but yeah, because yeah. I'm like, because then, then people are like, oh, he's going to kill you. I'm like, he's going to kill me. <laughs> I'm like, all right, anyway, so let's talk about the boxing match. No, but I wait, before we move on, I just think it's really interesting that you have a dog that's a was a pit bull bait dog. Yeah. And you essentially are 
a pit bull bait dog. <laughs> yeah, like a yeah, a chihuahua that just yaps at uh, all these pit bulls all day. Yeah, some I, parallels. I, I mean, yeah, but absolutely. I mean, you have unparalleled. My, power. my dog is three and zero against you, though. Yeah. He's bitten mayhem three times in the yeah, face. Yeah. Mellow. Uh, I almost let him bite me again just dude, for old time's part, sake. We were, I was at his party. And this is when Mayhem was like out of control, <laughs> naked, running around <laughs> with his dog in front of him. As is I, I'm want to do. And he takes these fucking like these little snaps, some of those little snap things, and, yeah. and he throws in my direction and hits my dog with a fucking snap thing. So my, I'm so some then, terrible person. So then I'm leaving, that. and he's I'm like, sorry. "Where are you going?" I'm like, "Cause you fucking threw fireworks at my dog." Yeah. At first, of all, they weren't fireworks; they were like those little snap things. But he's like, "Oh, <laughs> no, no, I'm no, sorry, no, no. doggy, doggy," and my dog goes no. like, "Oh, oh and no, no, you missed the part. I put." I chewed up some meat and put it in my mouth and tried to give it to him, and the dog bit me in the anyway, face. Bow, 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 I fucking bit, like, I gave you stitches. Two, two, two in the, I didn't get any stitches, but this scar right here is from that dog. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> my man. dog's like, Listen, getting, hey, like, you know, that dog's getting old, man. I, I it's time to put it down. Maybe I can do the job. No, 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 no. No, 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 thank you. All right, let's talk okay, about, uh, let's talk about the box. All right, so. All right, Deontay Wilder obviously saw your entrances. <laughs> and tried to steal my thunder. And he's claiming that <laughs> one of the reasons I he, just read this, this one morning. of the reasons he lost that fight against Tyson Fury was he had forty pounds of costume on him and his legs gave out. You know what's crazy, dude? I fucking when I saw him walking out, I said to my brother in law, my brother in law Jake, I said, That's probably gonna affect him in the fight. Like, Cause that looks that looks very uncomfortable. And then second of all, that's like a twenty minute walk. Yeah. From the locker room yeah, to the Yeah, plus to the this cage. guy was doing his black history rap for thirty yeah. minutes. Yeah. I mean how much I know, can you, can you get to the chorus, please? Now, how much is forty pounds of, of is that's that, a lot of weight. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of weight to be trudging up to the ring, you know, on the biggest fight of your life. And your face is but covered. moreover, I mean that could have an effect for for sure but i think more likely it was that extra 40 pounds that tyson fury was carrying around his midsection mm -hmm. that he just kept leaning on him and basically look look uh you know if you if you look at some successful mma fights for instance if there's a dude who's great at kickboxing and you got a little weight on this guy if you clench him hold on to him and start wearing him out dirty boxing old school randy couture style right you lean on him, guess what? His punches aren't snappy anymore, round two. And then his kicks are worthless, round three. Yeah. So then you just keep and Tyson him went over. to uh, He went to a, a trainer that used to be uh, Emmanuel Stewart's guy. Yeah. And Emmanuel Stewart was like notorious for her training the Klitschko's and Lennox Lewis of just put your oh, weight on somebody. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that that was a puts, trainer. Puts your weight on somebody. And then the rest of the time used long punches, jabs yeah. and, uh, and wide hooks. Yeah, look, that's exactly what he did. I mean, it was a great strategy. It worked. Shocked the world. I gave the edge. to. I thought Wilder was going to win. But then when I saw the first round, I was like, well, whoops. I made a mistake. Because as soon, like, as, soon as I saw the size differential yeah. be between the guys, I was like, wow, I really fucked this one up. Because I, I, I was on – the whole world got on Deontay Wilder's dick. And I, for a good reason, the dude's a great boxer, but and a good guy. He seemed like a pretty good guy. Yeah, but the the size difference was amazing, and he just used the perfect. I was strategy. ready for Wilder because I had a comedy show <laughs> after his first fight, and it was one of those shows. It was all Hollywood people. I mean, big time Hollywood people, actors, Ed Norton, this one, that one, and people were talking throughout people's sets, except for him. Him and his buddies were watching the whole show and like in the middle of the room, it wasn't like they were in the front and laughing and could not have been more polite. And that means a lot. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes like when you see a celebrity in the crowd and they're not paying attention to your set, you're just like, man, fuck this guy. Or they're talking the whole time or really? this or that. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you've been to like a hundred shows. You're always the most polite. Like you sit in the back, you watch. It means a lot when people pay attention as a performer. And it means a lot I like when someone's not doing that. Yeah. Um, I, even fights, like I have, like like a lot of people are like, hey, ma'am, if I'm at a fight, they try to talk through the rounds. Like, I'm like, nah. Like, I just kind of like go uh, in between rounds, bud. Oh, really? Yeah, because like as, if I'm sitting close enough, I don't want the fighters to be hearing at my loud ass voice like, ha ha ha, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, this dude's getting ground and pound. He's like trying to focus on what he's doing. I don't want to be fucking around making. Now, could you, you hear know. Joe Rogan talking during your fight? Yeah, I, you know, you hear everything sometimes. Like wherever you're closest to, you can hear like what's going on. Like it's a it's a bizarre thing where, you know, when you're really in the zone, you like you're hyper focused, but you also can like 
flit your focus from place to place. Like you can hear everything at the same time. It's a bizarre Now, experience. what do you think about people are talking about open scoring? Because I mean, I think, look, man, I'm about to damn. So we'll, we'll explain to people. Open scoring is like, they, so that like, you know, sometimes at the end of the fight, they'll say, okay, 50 to 45. You're like, what? That was like much closer than that or, or whatever. Well, they, they, the, score, the judges will tell you the score after each right. round. So you'll know if you're down three rounds to one and you got to win that. You, gotta, you need a knockout to win or something. Well, or, I have a few. <laughs> the argument the against it is what, what purpose is it going to serve? Except to rile the crowd up and piss everybody off. One guy and, might coast too if you're if you know that's you're. That's what up. I'm saying. Yeah, and then like there's a lot of reasons not to do it, and what reason is there to do it? Like, go ahead and convince me. Give me the reason why they should. Well, all right, I'll because try to, I'll try to play. Riot. I'll try to play. I I'm against it only because I, I sort of like the the mystification and mm. like the yeah. you know. Oh my god. Do I know who's gonna yeah. win? And it kind of keeps me, but that way a fighter who thinks he's up or he or thinks it's it might actually go for the knockout and they said in cage warriors which that has open scoring over in in ireland it's led to like exciting fights where there's not been one decision in the last whatever it's really? like, yeah they said it's been the opposite wow. of what you would think okay well. that's that's the one thing um I, I i could see both sides i mean in other sports you know the score yeah. Right. Um, and if it, you know a guy needs a submission or a knockout, at the same time, if I'm a fighter and I win the, and I think I won the round, and all of a sudden the judges give it the other guy, am I, am I, I might be like, what the, how the fuck did I lose? Am I thinking about the judges now and not the fight? You know? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot of different so, angles for it. I mean, really, something's got to be done because at this point, you know, we've seen. Three fights in a row where it's been like questionable ass judging, right? Like, mm -hmm. am I wrong about this? Because yeah. like, let's 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 play them back. This last UFC with Felder, right? Yeah. The, what the fuck was that? Okay, fine. Well, yeah. I get it. I get it. He was lumped up pretty good. And well, and how much? I was gonna ask you about that. How much does that affect the actual? A lot. The visual. Because a lot. A lot of times, one guy looks fucking like he just went through a war. Yeah. The other guy has better skin. Yeah. And whereas like Felder looked like he got more fucked up yes. than Hooker. It's well, no, it's a lot. I mean, that that shows it right there, like that decision. But at the same time, like judges are human. And the you crowd. Know, I tell you, there's, the crowd gets on the side of the guy who's not as lumped up. And it's just natural human instinct that if you got, even if you like win the fight, but you're all busted all to hell, that people tend to side with a guy with a less fucked up face, you know? It's I feel just like black reality. people have better skin. Oh, for sure. I, and not to be <laughs> racist, but it never oh, looks yeah. like they lose the fight. Mm. Uh, like uh, Cocoa butter, man, I'm it, telling is, you. You think, it's, you think it's cocoa Undoubtedly. butter? Undoubtedly, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, if you looked at Usma versus Colby, yeah. you would think Colby got, like, <laughs> yeah. annihilated. Tenderized? I yeah, mean, yeah. I can't think of a time where I've actually seen a black guy look like he got fucked up in a fight. <laughs> That's the most racist thing you ever said on this <laughs> podcast. But, like, in a weird Maybe, positive way. Maybe Rashad Evans in oh, yeah, all his fights. Uh, what? Did you see the the fight on the prelims? I think with Car Car France versus. I didn't see that one. Tam I thought that was a big robbery. I thought the Tyson Am one. I, no, I thought Car Car. I, I don't even know that's his real name. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I thought Car -Car. he lost almost every round, but he won 3027 on yeah. the judges' scorecards. Yeah. But then he's also like that's his home. It's New Zealand, you know. Yeah. So, so like back to what you're saying, the open judging might be the solution to a lot of this because if a guy knows he's down i guess you're right you know i mean there's a good argument to be made that if the corner goes yeah you're definitely down because i had fights where i was like i thought i was uh i thought i was up no what fight was that yeah uh it's been a it was a few there was a few different ones early in my career i don't even remember what, what they were uh, but i remember thinking like oh man like and then later you look at the scorecards and I was I was losing until I won. Wow. So I was like, whoa, like, okay. So you don't know. And I've been to fights. It depends on the it depends on the locale. Because I like I told you, I've been to a fight before where I don't know, man. The judge was talking to me the whole time of uh. the, what, not watching the fight. Now I was sitting that, next. I was sitting in the judges? front row, and he kept leaning around. And like, hey, man, I like bully beatdown. And I'm like, whoa, this guy's a judge. And he's like, yeah, I'm the, my favorite episode you fought on. And I'm like, what the fuck is going, on? bro? I even told him, watch the fight, man. What? Now Wilder's equilibrium. 
right? This yeah. His ear exploded yeah. or something. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Well, that's the that's the interesting thing is before the trick bite, I was sparring with Jeremy Williams, like world class boxer. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he bust me in the ear so hard that like I was spinning for weeks, weeks. Yeah, like a, a week or two before that fight. I was like, con- it was like one of my last spots. Like when you got up too fast or something? Or? Yeah, it's like that. You know that weird, like, uh, I felt like, you know the zipper at yeah. a uh, circus? I felt like it was on the zipper all, day all long? the time. Uh, well, every time I leaned backwards, every time I was in the guard, I was spinning. Yeah, and it, you know, it's one of those things, if you're if a gamer, you just keep, you know, you push through. And that's, that's what you got to do, you know, to be... To be successful in the sport, sometimes you know you're injured. Frank Trigg, by the way, go. one of those guys, underrated fighter. And yeah, also, it was like one of those things. He was against the uh, status quo, so he got the same treatment as anybody who goes against. He him. also looks back at like, it's almost like he has that uh, guy from Ace Ventura, uh, Einhorn. Like he's like laces out. Like he, oh, uh, oh. as far as the Matt Hughes fight, oh, like he's course, like, yeah. if only my life, if only I would have won that, my oh. whole life would be different. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, but we all have to deal with that, right? And so, I mean, I'm sure they're like, what, last comic standing? Yeah, well, Eliza Schlesinger, when she won. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we all have those, like, oh, I should have, would have, could have. Yeah, you know, but, that's not, just life, I, yeah but his is like, <laughs> pretty big. <laughs> well, just also, oh, it's gave right us, there. It's but like, he gave us, like, one, that was one of the best fights of all time. Of course. So, you know, obviously, you know, it, it's like. What's well, crazy we, how we Hughes all, was the good guy in that? Weird. And uh, Trigg was the bad guy. Weird. Yeah. But if you look, people that seem to know Hughes and know <laughs> yeah. Trigg yeah, sometimes yeah. feel a little differently. The opposite. I know, huh? Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, so, but Deontay, I mean, obviously, I don't know. Did I didn't I didn't read the report afterwards. Like, did they tell, did they yeah, say the ear it was definitely was. It was bleeding, It was but very it strange to see somebody gushing blood out of their ear and not have Ebola. You know, like, yeah. what the fuck was that, bro? He also I, seems I was like one of those guys that, like, keeps getting away with bad habits working for him. Yeah. I mean, you can't keep losing eight rounds and then catching guy in the ninth and win the fight. That's going to eventually catch up to you. And it sort of did. The strategy worked. Like, the, you know, Fury was badass. Like, that was like a grappling match, sort of. You know, like, he, like, just the first six rounds or whatever was all gra- – or first five rounds were, like, all grappling. Mm-hmm. And then it was just a slam. What's going on, bro? I, you're uh, no, he's, he's telling me we got 20 minutes. But I think we're going to do one today. We, 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 we have till three, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, next week I'm in Vegas, so we don't have a podcast next week. Unless you want to come to Vegas with me, we can do a podcast. I'll take you to the fights. Or I can just come here by myself you wanna do, you, and uh, do a lone podcast. From the that studio. too. Just, uh, uh, do you want to come to Vegas class? next week? I'm not sure. I got, I'll, I got, I got, I got a room sure for you. i my schedule. I'll, I mean, with me. Wait, uh, is it at the Stratosphere? At the Strat. Oh, no thanks. I, I could I'm actually, no, it's called the Strat now. They, they, <laughs> they did it. Oh, oh, oh. It's called oh, the Strat. Oh, it's the Strat? Never mind. Sign me up. It's, no. called, it's like when Urkel became like uh, Stefan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> badass. Um, now, what did you think about Fury tasting the blood? I didn't taste it. That was like something the damn announcer said. That was ridiculous. He just like flicked his tongue. The tongue flick. I liked it. He did have the you ever Shakira done that? tongue tongue for sure. Of course. Who have you made out with during a fight? Uh, Look like he was giving him a hickey, sort of. Ooh. No. Uh, th- what are you talking it about, bro? It looked like bro? he was like licking his Why neck. Why did you make everything sexual? He <laughs> oh. was just flicking his tongue, bro. Yeah, That's just man. a casual it's Friday for him. Oh, yeah. yeah. How, how's your sex life going, by the way? It's good, but <laughs> I got some, some strange things going on mentally for me, dude. <laughs> well, well, yeah. uh, As usual. I'm a guy that's heavily influenced by his dreams. You know, like my, I let my dreams like sort of dictate my emotions sometimes. <laughs> sometimes that's Starbucks good. Something? You know, sometimes uh-huh. that's good. Sometimes that's bad. Uh, the other night, I had a, a, a dream where I was like in this relationship with this person who I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. Oh. It was like it looked like a woman, but it had like a man's face. Nice. My in conclusion was that it was a man. So I was like in this gay relationship. With hey, this bro. Man. She, maybe she was non-binary. So, so then, yeah, I'm so not, you're I'm not worried. You might be gay. Well, I was having gay sex with this man in my dream. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> But something happened. Were you top or bottom? Listen, I was, I was top. You okay. Know? So I, that's not that gay. It's, right. it's, it's, it's still gay, but not that gay. It's, it's, I mean, you were riding him? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty gay. Yeah. Don't you think yeah. having being erect in somebody is gayer than just taking it? I mean, it's a debate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of this conversation. It's a, it's a debate that's been debated for centuries, dude. I don't know. I, uh, 
I don't know, man. It depends if you're enjoying it on the bottom. That's <laughs> a good but. point. So go on. So what happened? So in this dream, I was like banging this dude, and then he just started farting all over me. And see, this sounds so dumb, but yeah. it happened. This is like my. This is this is real. Okay. And right when that happened, I woke up and, and I was like, came. Oh, I'm not gay. Oh, why? Because the fart? Yeah. And I just, I couldn't, I was, I don't know. Saying, I'm going to edit this part out, by the way. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm not no, you're not. No, you're not. Not even no, close. No, you're not. No yeah. editing. <laughs> not now, bro, even. I'm just, you just took it to another Listen, level. I'm, I know that <laughs> if gonna, I was to make oh. that up, I would be, I would not say this because it would be so retarded. It, it would have no, made sense. No, this, is, this really happened. That's All what right. I'm saying. I know it sounds well, so Well, you're stupid. into women, though. You have a girlfriend? I do have a girlfriend. Did you tell her about your dream? Uh, she knows no. now. I don't want to tell nobody about that. <laughs> except for everyone. Yeah, except podcast. for fucking I mean, ten thousand people. 30, who watch, 000, thirty thousand. A million people who watch right. this goddamn yeah. podcast. I, I think, think you're okay, think man. People deal. have crazy dreams. It doesn't mean anything. Right. Okay. How's All Valentine's right. Day? I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> it means something. It might not mean everything, but it means something. I had a lot of gay dreams before, but that one was just kind of. We, strange. you know, <laughs> don't don't be so suburban, bro. Don't just think of yourself as binary. Maybe mm. you're a woman inside. I could man. be. No, maybe know. maybe you're a guy who likes gay sex. I mean, yeah, it's not <laughs> a big deal. Gay. Uh, listen, all right. this is a matter. Listen, what matters is Cejudo is fighting Aldo. All right, so uh, <laughs> yeah. so back to the all right, segue. So, by so the way, so Henry Cejudo, people are very angry because he, after he won his last fight, he called out Jose Aldo. Yeah. Right? And Aldo is coming off a loss. But is it a loss? I was there. Was it really? It could a loss? either way. Exactly. Kind of like Wean Dog. Yeah. Um, so, so it was one of those things that could have went either way, right? Yeah. Um, I I didn't hate the decision. I think yeah, people I love Aldo so much. Yeah, we all love that him. they wanted him to win. Exactly. Um, but it is weird that that this is, he gets the next he gets the title shot, <sighs> but it's in Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you know what? Brazil? No, no. You spent I, time I just there. trained there. Yeah. What was that like training there? <sighs> it was awesome. I mean, it was. It was awesome. Train with Aldo? Yeah. No, yeah. I trained with the Aldo. <laughs> the team, bro, is a team of the most savage, like, midgets on earth, bro. Like, it was like a bunch of, like, little jacked Brazilian dudes. Was it Nogueira and those guys? Or? I trained with them, too. I trained with, I, you know, I trained with all the teams. What's the difference between, like, training in Brazil versus training in the U.S.? Well, I feel like there's, like, uh, a longer tradition. So that there's a more developed, every camp has a more developed style. Because, you know, here in America, we just really got going in the past 20 years, you know. But in Brazil, they've been doing it since the 60s. So it's like more, like, uh, there's, it's like more flushed out. Like everybody has different strategies and, and they have like a, uh, you know, they're, you know, back in the day, it was just like split up with uh, Lucha Livre, you know, Luta, Luta Livre, which is like, you know, stand-up kind of Muay Thai fighting. And then it was the Gra Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. So, you know, the history uh, of those two camps being separated has kind of dissolved. And now these new, the birth of those, you know, two styles combined is at every different camp. And guys are picking up more wrestling from Americans. So it's like a strange, like, melting pot where you see these, like, extremely developed styles and the thing about brazilian people is that like they're all like physically talented like here in america we like put money over everything it seems like in brazil they're like put physicality it's over like everything women too. oh my goodness but, but as far as like the practice right so you've been yeah. through like i don't know practice all over the world yeah uh in america you know i would say a lot of practices are like okay today we're you know you go you stretch you do some shadow boxing training, and then you do some, like, you know, rolling, and then maybe sparring at the end. Yeah. Is yeah. that how Well, it Aldo's in? camp was different. Like, they, like, pretty much sparred, like, all the time. And I think that's kind of the reason that we're having Aldo, like, be kind of, you know what I mean? He's little, young. Yeah. And everybody, like, you know, uh, they put a lot of round uh, emphasis on sparring. Big so glove sparring like, or small glove sparring? Both. And it was it was real wild. I, I got to watch some, I mean, some matches that were like unbelievable in that room because the dudes are lighter weight. The room is pretty damn small. That's the other thing about Brazil is that you know uh, the space is at a premium. Like, you know, it's expensive there. You know, for martial arts. So these dudes are you know it's hard to get a, a nice academy. So the gyms are all kind of small. So uh, uh, you know, the, and these dudes just go for it like badass fighting and their style you you can tell that everybody on that team is a gamer like 
because in order to stay in that room, you got to be able to and fight. And is it anything goes like heel hooks? Uh, like people are. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, they the thing about that was at the end of the training session, you know, since we were so much heavier, I was like a lot heavier than everyone there. The craziest thing happened. Like the dude started like screaming something in Portuguese <laughs> at me. And I was like, what? And then but the translator said, he's asking if you're heavy or light. And I was like, uh, I'm heavy. And the guy went, oh, <laughs> and, I, and everybody screamed like, oh, he's heavy. He's heavy. And then everybody like surrounded me and just jumped on my ass and like started fucking tackling me and tapping me out. And then like, what if you were choking light? me? I, they were all light. I would have been on their team if oh. I was light, but I was heavy. So they just tapped me. Somebody you bit me on the me? ass. No. Yes. Do you think that Aldo, caused coronavirus? After the after, yeah, that guy definitely had some type of virus. After the, after the session, uh, Jose Aldo pointed the guy out who bit me on the ass, and I bit that dude on the shoulder so hard. Really? Yeah, was left the laughing? mark. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like co now, camaraderie. Afterwards, are you going to the beach? And the Brazilian women are just insane. Oh, insane. Yeah, are they flirting with you, or are you hitting oh, on them? Oh, for sure. I, you know what? There's a weird. I mean, I don't know. You know, it, I got like. 30% better looking in a third world country. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, they want Americans. I guess. I mean. Now, a lot, I heard a lot of them are escorts. <laughs> I don't know. I, I well, they, but they were giving you free everything. I didn't free. speak Portuguese enough to, to get to the, trans, the the payment transaction part of the I, I dated a deal. girl who was a, a porn star, and then I found out she was, <laughs> I found out she was an escort on like like a high but what's the difference come on well there's a camera involved but anyway yeah. but she wasn't charging me i don't know if i was insulted or nah, <laughs> like, me. she just liked me uh, but yeah. uh but like you should have got a punch card I, I, <laughs> your next one is free so uh all right let's talk about <laughs> now a lot of people are, are angry aljamain sterling's upset and i really think he should get you, you can't start just giving people title shots because you like them what do you mean because they're legends mm -hmm. you Bro, gotta go by the ranking listen you're like keep every show you like make this argument and i always tell you you're an idiot because you're an idiot <laughs> uh, of course you can look who's gonna sell more tickets that guy you just named who i don't know Aljamain sterling Aljamain Aljamain sterling you, yeah and, or or jose aldo especially in brazil Come on. Well, they, they wouldn't fight in Brazil if it was Aljamain Sterling. Obviously but, not, um, but their UFC is going to will, Brazil, of course. and it's a solid money move yeah. to have their biggest star in that weight class. Then why even have rankings? Then? <laughs> to make nerds like you feel better about the sport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, the people in the know realize that, hell yeah. yeah. Like, you know, I Jose was Aldo. with Aljamain one time, actually, in Vegas. Really? It was, well, Dan Henderson. No, he's a, and don't get me wrong, he's a fantastic fighter, but what I mean is that ticket sales. Well, Hendo but, came to my, my show and was like, hey, afterwards, we're going to a party bus. You're coming, right? <laughs> and my wife was like, going to be in labor in two weeks. <laughs> she was furious when I told her on the way to deliver the baby. But anyway, so it was, uh, <laughs> but we go there and Hendo's giving lap dances on the party bus, which you have not lived or so you died until you've, seen, Hendo you've lap seen him give lap dances. <laughs> Then I get there. I'm with uh, Gian Vellante, who's a great guy, uh, and Al Jermaine and his and his girlfriend, who's like smoking hot. Like Mayweather hit on her one time, and like they almost fought. Like she's like, and uh, but they were fighting. You're ever into a club or a strip club with a couple that's fighting. It's and I kept trying to make them laugh, make her laugh mm -hmm. at my expense. You're that guy. Because I'm like, yeah. Well, she came to the show and this and that, and I kept making it worse. Like, you ever have two friends that don't like each other, and you like, oh, if I get them both to hate me, they'll at least mm. bond? I used to be that guy, but I was failing miserably with his girlfriend. <laughs> uh, uh, she's from Long Island, too. Uh, like, beautiful, uh, but it was Riveting. bad. It was bad. Great story. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> Little Nog is taking on Shogun for the third time. Yeah, that's a wild one. That's uh, so strange. Nog is 44 years old. Nice. Yeah, I, I don't get that. I mean, good for them. They, you know, I guess they, you know, they want to fight. So let's well, do it. I guess it's like um, trying to capture that magic, huh? Well, I guess it's you know, I'd rather have two old guy, older veterans fight each other than a young upstart versus a, you know, that like, happens too. Which yeah, but I like when the old guy wins. Uh, so Israel uh, Izzy uh, Stylebender. Yeah. So he made a joke uh, about I guess he he's fighting Romero. Yeah. And he I think he said something to the extent of I'm gonna make him fall like like the Twin Towers or mm -hmm. something. People got really angry about that. He since apologized. Like What, I, is it too soon? Oh well, being from New York, I, I 
I get it was look. I'm not, I wasn't offended by this. I'm gonna bomb him like a kamikaze did Pearl Harbor. Because I knew that he, he didn't mean it. Like he wasn't trying to make fun of the three million, the three thousand people that died. I I get he was just making a stupid. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't. And when he I, apologized. And when I first heard it, I thought he was talking about Lord of the Rings, like the Twin Towers from Lord of the Rings, because he's from New Zealand, and that's like a Lord, like New Zealand is like. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I thought. I didn't think of 9/11. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're on the spectrum. Lord of the Rings, <laughs> the Twin so, Towers, <laughs> two towers, anyone? Calm down, Frodo. God damn it! It's not exactly what anyone else in the world thought, but you. Well, I'm just, I'm just trying to help him out. It's a, okay. Well, I knew oh. it. I, I don't know. I don't think I don't he know. meant it in, in the way people <laughs> took it. Uh, so let's talk about some of the fights over the weekend. Uh, so we talked about Felder being robbed. Angela Hill fought now twice in 28 days, six fights in 11 months, won five of them. She's staying healthy. Now, do you think that was your problem? I'm fighting all the time. Too much? No, inactivity. Oh. Because I know there was a while where, like, Strike Force got bought out by the oh, UFC. Yeah, that was the worst. And, and yeah. Then... yeah, that was a nightmare where, where if you don't get the fight for a long time, you're just in the room all the time. Yeah, it really And is. all the distractions in your life. You think if like you would have fought six times in eleven months for like four maybe you'd have more brain damage or whatever. Yeah, but for sure. it would you've actually would have been in a better spot. Yeah, I maybe, yeah. I, it, keeping a fighter active definitely helps them, you know, develop. And then what? She's on a win streak right now, right? Yeah, so it's like it. yeah, it's like one of those things that if you, you're healthy enough to keep fighting, keep fighting, you know? Yeah, no. Well, I that's that's so interesting that she fought in the 28 days. So she didn't get injured in that fight at all, huh? No. Awesome. No, no. And she's just killing it. Um, Shion, or Jan Shionanan, I just butchered it, but she, she fought Carolina. Kowalkiewicz? Yeah, and who's now lost four in a row. Says Sucks. she was seeing double after the first round. Yeah, she had like a broken orbital bone or something. Have you ever seen, saw double? Uh, no, no, nah, I never. Not, had I, mean, that. I mean, when you were drunk or something. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, but no, I never, I, I never had like a head injury and saw double. Yeah, that that that's concerning. Oh, she broke her orbital. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's probably a visual, you know, thing where her eye is a little bit. She's got to take some time off. I mean, four in a row. She's got to figure out what she's doing wrong because she came out like guns a blazing in the beginning. Yeah. Wait. So right. that, I mean, but they're probably gonna cut her. No. They probably will, but she's from Poland, right? I think she has a big following. I don't think the UFC is going to cut her. I mean, a lot of times if somebody is from a country where there are not a lot of stars, which I think is the case with her, I'm pretty sure she's from Poland, and I don't think they have many UFC stars in Poland, they'll keep people, which is also not fair. The level but is high out there. I spent time out there. In the, Poland? Yeah, the level is pretty high because they have a strong tradition of judo. For female fighters? Female fighter. There are a lot there. Yeah, there. there I saw, I got the pleasure to meet a few, and I was there. Tough. There's some tough people out there in Poland. My favorite is when Sean McCorkle, who we're gonna have yeah. on the podcast. I love awesome. that guy. He uh, when he beat Pudzianowski. Yeah. Um, he the second time he fought him, he wore a Pudzianowski shirt. Yeah. During the uh, during during the press conference, and they were like, "Why are you wearing a shirt of your opponent?" And he goes to remind myself who the second strongest man in the world is because <laughs> he's the world's strongest man. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, he goes, I am now the world's strongest man. Then he, and then he, then he goes, I'm no longer a citizen of the U S I renounced my citizenship. <laughs> and then he, he, the reporter was like, who's going to win tonight? He goes, it depends on who, who's, who steroids are better. <laughs> he said that. Classic McCork. Yeah. I, oh, I love man. that guy. We're going to have him back on. Uh, right. He's a big fan of yours. I'm a big fan of his. He's hilarious. Um, Emil Meek, Jake Matthews. And that one was a t- close one too. I thought I thought Amik had that one. I thought Meek Mill won for sure. I mean, yeah. Drake had nothing on him. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Bellator because you're right. They had great events. So they had an event Friday, which was awesome, from Oklahoma. Then they had an event Saturday morning from Ireland. But then they showed the undercard, and then they had the main card on later on in the day on tape delay after you know who won because you're on Instagram and everyone yeah. posts it. And it goes up against a Tyson Fury fight. That night. What? Yeah. Like, who thought this was a good idea? Yeah. I don't understand that. I Yeah. I mean, I guess what? We have to blame Scott Coker, right? He's the guy who's, like, calling all the shots there. But also, you know what? Uh, Let me take that back. Because more than likely, the CEO who's dealing with the television network, that's who called the shot. And they don't understand, you know, the MMA fans. They just understand TV numbers. They figure, oh, this does pretty good, so we're going to put it on the nighttime slot, you know, for people who don't watch or boxing. There, you or, have to guarantee a, a certain amount of programs per year. and this Something like, yeah, that, it's some you know? stuff that's out of our pay grade. We don't understand. Uh, but let's talk about the first one. So Georgie Karakanyan won, uh, won pretty easily. I'm happy for him. You ever see him train He's out of Millennium? He's a guy who's like kind of a road warrior. but just uh, And after he won, he, 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 has, he like 
he this is for my son. His son was being born that day. Wow. And so nice. that was that was pretty... I mean, at least he wasn't getting a lap dance from Dan Henderson. <laughs> 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 Rowdy Beck won. Yeah, Rowdy and, Beck is the best. And oh then called God. out Heather Hardy. Have you seen Heather Hardy? No, but She's have a, you seen Rowdy Beck's uh, Just Fans account? <laughs> fan, only fans only. Fan, whatever the fuck it's so called. She's, dude, she's somebody a, needs to give me a somebody login Somebody sent for me that. a picture Seriously. of her. <laughs> somebody a picture of her on a bike, and she's topless. Rowdy Beck? <laughs> and then they wrote, nice rack on the bike. Like, like nice bike rack. I was like, dude, you guys have too much free time, but that's funny. Uh, so, all right. If we could get to this fight. You so, love dad jokes. So Ed Ruth, I didn't make that joke, but Ed <laughs> yeah, Ruth fought this did. guy. Uh, his last name is Amosov, A-M-O-S-O-V, who's now 22-0. and 0. Ed Ruth was a guy everyone was saying is the next big yeah, thing. Yeah. He was a Penn State phenom, I think three-time national champion. Yeah. I'm sure wrestlers will fucking tell me. No, he is. Yeah, you get it. We he, get he, it. He's, he's at that level. He's a fantastic wrestler, yeah. So two of his fight. so he he's... Something's off with him. It's like he he loses to to Gracie, and then he kind of gasses out. Last fight he won, but it was close. You could have given it to the other guy. This fight, there was two times he's on top of the guy, and he could put the rear naked choke in, but doesn't sink his feet in to get the hooks in. Yeah. Now, I can't be the only guy going, what's <laughs> going on? Because John McCarthy is screaming, put your hooks in, as the announcer, which also, what? yeah, like. That's bizarre. Uh, could, can we bring that up? Uh, <laughs> Wait, I want to hear Big so, John screaming so and coaching Ed Ruth, from, the, from the broadcast. A-M-O-S-O-V. And he ended up losing the fight. Uh, it was and you, a good, think, you think it's because he didn't sink the hooks. Well, I, I think that that's a, like a personal choice for a fighter, and especially a wrestler. A lot of guys don't like to run legs, like put their hooks in. I don't know why, but they feel like they have more control. They can float on the guy's back. Well, the guy was the guy was tripoding up. Yeah, yeah, so, I know, yeah. Like, what on what earth should you not put your hooks in here? If your strategy, look, there's some fights I didn't put hooks in because the strategy was to ground and pound the guy, and you just stay behind him and then score shots. You can't do from that there. with your hooks in. <laughs> well, you, you got to flat him out first. You, well, no, because if you're if you're hanging on his back with no hooks, you have more. Uh, you have more range to like extend your arm and punch because if you're hooked in on his back, you can just kind of like do this like patty cake right. and there's no knockout potential. But if you're like riding high on his back, you know, with your hip to hip motion, right. Ed Ruth, you, just, you can smash on the guy. Do, do a lot, we have the whole fight? That's probably the second one, right? Full fight. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the second round, uh, round two. Cause I was like, this was like, I don't understand uh, fight IQ. Like this dude, high level wrestler. I mean, he he's got a bit like road legs before. I mean, there's not a decent wrestler out there who does not a, a, a decent leg rider. Even if you're not even a leg rider, you can still ride legs, you know. So it'll be, it'll be round two. Um, this video is part one. It might be in part two. Yeah, it'll be a part two. Right, probably right uh, below well, here's it. Here's round two. Right, right, right below it. All right, so all right, round two. All right, so keep going. Late in the well, late in the round, right? Yeah, so it's late in the round. It, might it seemed be like the fight two. was a little bit in slow motion, to be honest. Uh, yeah, he looks tired, right? Yeah, both guys got wore out. Yeah, I, I remember. It's like, uh, let's see. And this is the main event. I mean, they were really high on this kid. And look, I mean, look, he's had three now, th two losses. It's not exactly, you know. I mean, what? How many losses? Is it? No, no, you're, you're right. Go on. No, because the video is about to end. It's like, oh, they like break it up into different parts. I don't understand so what that's for. More clicks or what the hell? We're just I'm like watching sure. like piece by piece, and the listeners are just listening to us jabber on. Well, about... no, because I, I, I man, I, I honestly, am, I'm curious as to why he would not throw his hooks. All right, in. here we go. It's All right, so hold here. on. Here we go. Yeah, let, let's listen to John McCarthy yodel about putting the hooks in. Yodel. Big John, by the way, I know people were riding him about being an announcer. He's a great announcer. Is he? He is a great announcer. All right. The best announcer, in my opinion, is Pat Militage. Really? Who gets zero credit. He does the, the uh, legacy fights. Yeah. And he almost always tells you what's going to happen. And I always, his scorecard is usually not, no, it's usually the right, but sometimes it's not right. But I'd almost like rather win on his scorecard than the actual judges. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I think that's a, a thing that we didn't talk about earlier is that maybe, uh, you know, you should have some, instead of like the, the boys club that is the judges, you have like guys who've actually fought be the judges. Maybe yeah. that's a wild revolutionary idea. Uh, Militus, by the way, was very angry on Facebook today because uh, or, uh, Mayor Pete had a nine-year-old go to his thing who said he was gay. 
And he was like, I'm, I'm proud of you. Gay uh, nine-year-old? Uh, one of, yeah. And he's like, this is child abuse. A nine-year-old doesn't know if he's gay or not. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bud. I, I don't know, bud. <laughs> I've seen a few gay nine-year-olds for sure. Uh, really? Yeah. Where have you seen? <laughs> uh, <laughs> where, what, what? I don't know. Back about All right, right here. 10 years ago, okay, so I here. met Ween Dog. All right. So one. All right. So here. <laughs> so right here. Shouldn't he put his hooks in here? I mean, I don't know, bud. Like. The strategy here looks to be wrestling style, like I said. We see he's he's doing like a wrestling leg ride, like I mean, with not a leg ride, just like a wrestling ride where you put hip to hip, and you just see this instead of the hooks with your legs, he's putting like the seatbelt kind of position. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, look, sure, but you know, you're not in there. Of course, I'm not. Of course, I'm yeah. not in there. But I'm. Yeah. I'm. I'm allowed to comment on what I. Yeah, see, but right? I, no. But at the same time, what I'm saying is that if he's not comfortable putting legs in to ride why, why on earth would he do that all right that happened i mean look yeah happened. was it a mistake obviously it was exact same he lost the fight and like and like the third round too yeah yeah well look if you're not comfortable with that technique how are you gonna bust it out in in a title fight you know what i'm saying like in, in a main event how you know if you're not comfortable riding legs you're not gonna do it but it's a isn't that kind of a basic rear naked choke <laughs> look the beauty of mixed martial arts is that it's mixed. There's guys who have different techniques, yeah, yeah, different yeah. styles, and some guys do not do, you know, hooks. Uh, I mean, look, yeah, is it standard for most fighters? Yes. Is this guy a standard fighter? No. He's a wrestling style fighter who doesn't do jujitsu really. You know, I mean, I'm sure he does it now, but what I mean is his base is wrestling, and you always revert back to what you're best at and the style that you're you're most comfortable with and obviously these dudes got real tired after that first round so that's just you know that's just how it is bud all right there's another uh, guy a guy to watch this guy kyle crutchmer uh kyle c-r-u-t-c-h-m-e-r crutchmer yeah this dude was uh oklahoma state i think state champion yeah wrestled for osu stud yeah um he fights this guy scott futrell F U T R E L L. Uh, you guys see the submission? I, I was, think it's Fatrell. Fatrell? Yeah. Uh, gotta be. Probably. Sorry. But uh, you gotta see the submission because the, once again, this is on the undercard of Bellator. Yeah. No so one. on at like 6 a.m.? No one sees this. Yeah. Uh, I didn't unless, see it for sure. unless you have the Bellator app. Really? Uh, yeah. I have the Bellator app. Uh, I and, didn't get an alert. <laughs> no. And it's one of those things where like this guy is 6 0. Oh, I think he was an All American many times. Um, why is he getting buried on the undercard? Like, he's a guy to watch, but I want you to show, cause like, What's and I want, again? uh, Crutchmer, Kyle, C-R-U-T-C-H-M-E-R. I, I get it. Maybe they're trying to build guys records. So when he comes out, he's 12 and 0 and this and that. But if you know a guy's a two, three time All-American, I, why not put him up there? I, I just think, well, the strategy for Bellator seems to be like, I mean, they have a lot of fights too. So they got to put these fights somewhere, right? So, I, and I think you're right. I think you nailed it. They want this guy to build up his record. And then, and moreover. The fight's in Oklahoma. Yeah, but. Yeah. It's in Oklahoma. The guy went to OSU. Yeah. He's a stud. Yeah. Uh, they might not have the fight if it's like an early, early prelim. And I'll have right. it. Look at it. Okay, so this right here. Oh, never mind. All right. So t- tell me, Mayhem, I break this down. All right. Mm-hmm. This is the front headlock right here. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure you know this maneuver. Oh, okay. So he like, uh, come on, bud. This is a Noguera <laughs> choke. This is like the classic Noguera front headlock choke. Uh, th- there's a, a, a lot of different things. Is that like a standing Darce? It, it wasn't a Darce because he had his, uh, it's called an anaconda. A lot of people okay, call so it yeah. an anaconda choke. So we, he transitions to the front headlock here. All right, now see how his arms are? That's the opposite of a Darce. A Darce, you have your wrist on the guy's uh, neck. This one, he had his, uh, you know, uh, oh, it is a Darce. Ah, I was wrong. <laughs> no, no, my bad. I thought it was anaconda choke because from the other angle, I couldn't see. My bad. Yeah, it was a standing Darce. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was badass. Well, it's weird how he got it, though, because, you know, usually with a Darce, you got to be a little more on the side like that, but he was like, locked in bro like that dude is a stud yeah those, those are pretty nice there's a kid i'm telling you people uh i could call him obviously you know people that know wrestling are gonna be like yeah duh, of course but to the average person keep an eye on kyle crutchmer because this kid's a, a stud mm. uh chris lencioni who came to my show this fight i now this was cl- it was he he got the win mm. a lot of people thought he lost it was uh, according to the the, the People that he hit me up. He goes, I'm disappointed in you. Why? I go, why? He's like, you didn't roast me. 
And I was like, uh, I don't roast, I go, I don't roast the post limbs. Uh, ah! cause he wasn't, he was on the post, not even the prelims or the main, the post limbs. I go, when you get to the, uh, when you get to the prelims, call me. And then I was, I was fucking with him, you know, nice. but, uh, should have zinged him with that on the Twitters. So he, um, well, no one would know what I was talking about. Cause exactly. it was the post All right. So, but this kid I like, he happens to be a really good, he, he rolled his ankle in the first, broke his ankle, still won the fight in the third round. It's called, he's fighting this guy, Salim. So Chris, L-E-N-C-I-O-N-I, against Salim. He, he does a backpack uh, where he jumps on the guy's back, and the guy's yelling at him and, and booing. The guy's booing him on his back. Classic. Yeah. Uh, which I want to say, what would you do? <laughs> uh, Choke the shit out of that guy. And yeah. you were both guys. I want to yeah. say, what, what, what mayhem, what you, do we have it? I Lencioni. would definitely give a thumbs up to the crowd if I was on his back. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, the sure. guy's booing? You yeah, would say I would thumbs up. So let's see who's going to get the boo, who's going to get the yay. You know what I mean? It's just a next level <laughs> but, strategy. But wouldn't you let go? Get the crowd on your but side. Wouldn't you let go of the choke if you're giving the thumbs up? No. You, you could. Come on, bud. How do you do that? Like, I don't you're, know. you're trying to choke the Magic? guy? Magic? <laughs> you're trying to choke the guy? So, how do you. Like, for real, how do you do Listen, that? Listen, bro, I, I, I've done weirder shit in my career. Yeah, you had GSP <laughs> yeah. punching you, and you were laughing at him. Yeah, yeah, you know what's obviously. funny is that a lot yeah. of people that yeah. watched that fight who were going to fight you were scared. Like, uh, I remember um, when you were fighting Luke, Luke Barnett, yeah. which you kept saying you're fighting Jake Barnett. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you kept saying Josh Barnett. Yeah, yeah. You kept Josh making videos hilarious. saying you're fighting Josh Barnett. But Luke Barnett was like, hey, how's Mayhem look? He was asking me. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if he's uh, taking this too seriously or something. <laughs> <laughs> I kind yeah. of wrote it, ratted you out a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But uh, he said, um, he goes, this dude's, he goes, he's one hell of a fighter. Yeah. He goes, uh, he was laughing. Yeah. And then. It's a strange thing to be able to absorb shots like, you know what I mean? And just ignore them, you know, and it's like a, a weird uh, magic trick. Okay, oh, so we go, to, the video. we go cool. to round three against, but so, and then same thing with Bisbing. Yeah. Bisbing was Just like, take the shots. he was actually like, uh, he was nervous about fighting you because of the fact, I think you scared more people by laughing about the fact you were going to beat up. Iron, iron face. Yeah. All right. Let's see this right here. All right. So. When in the third round. Does all right. Happen? It happens that, when there's like one minute left in the third round or what, a minute and a half left. Okay. Yeah. So here, right. So oh, he's, wow. he's on his back. Crazy. So, I mean, look the the body lock that he has right here. So he's is mad, no right? So he's he's trying to get the ref to break it up. To break it up? Yeah. Why? And yeah, the, that I I don't see why you'd do that. Uh, really, in this situation, <laughs> you know, I don't understand why this guy wouldn't just <laughs> splash. You know what I mean? Like splash the guy down on his back. It's a it's a valid technique. You could know? that make it tighter though? No, I mean it could, but here's the thing: is that as you're Splat as you splash him down, you twist, you twist out of that. This is a wild ass fight, man. So, this so is this guy's, really weird. So he's, he's he's yelling pussy and boo. Kind of turned on right now. <laughs> Checks out. So he's yelling pussy and boo. The guy's from Russia, so he's he's really thinking this guy's a pussy, you know. Mm. But I mean, is this a valid? That what would do you I'm, think? I'm Chris, just so glad the Russians are learning English. You know what I mean. <laughs> You know they they got like a, a they got a good vocabulary. But, these but days. what do you think about Chris's strategy here? What should Chris be doing? Uh, really, like I don't understand why he has his arm over here and this little. <laughs> this is hilarious. What the fuck kind of freak show are we watching? <laughs> I, yeah, I kind of feel like I'm I'm watching one of Ween's dreams out loud. Exactly right here. my dreams look <laughs> bizarre. I, I love the fact that I watch this. And who's winning right now? <laughs> Like how do you hey, judge this? The fans. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think is winning? I don't know. Right we now? are, for sure. Uh, yeah. That's a bizarre. Now, how much of those? Now he broke his ankle. So now, how much of those do those elbows hurt? By the way, when you're uh, like, it's like you know when you like hang your head out a car window. Yeah. And no. a bug hits you. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. That's about how much. Yeah. What are you, Ace Ventura? Like, yeah. what, why are yeah, you driving yeah. like with a? <laughs> 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 wow, from the consulate. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right, and uh, now, all right. So, um, so you shout out the, to the grappling matches that happened. Yeah, over the yeah. Weekend? So they had two on two jujitsu. Uh, okay, what the fuck was that about? Like I didn't team. see this tag team. Can we look up uh, submission underground? Chael Sonnen, 
Uh, Vinny, you might need Fight Pass for this. <laughs> those, yeah, they got those videos on lockdown. They're hard to find. Oh, really? Yeah. They're like, I have it on my Fight Pass. If you use my code, but that might be a pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> All right. They have like a sumo. Yeah, you give, why don't you just give out your Fight Pass code yeah, everybody on the just, air and everybody it. just use yours? Thank you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some of the fights this week. Uh, yeah, what's so, up, man? What's going on this weekend? That's B the big Benavides question. Benavides yeah, yeah, is fighting yeah. Division Figuero. 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 Uh, Figaro? Just, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe a submission underground highlights. Okay. Nice. All right, so go down. Yeah, so do they actually show any of the highlights? No. I had Quinta lost to Mike Perry. Yeah. Surprisingly. But the thing that this, though, is that every fight went into overtime. Yeah. And then they start in submissions. Like a guy comes in with a rear naked choke or an arm bar. I don't know about that. I think they got to do a better way because it just seems like every, when every... I know, that's like the cop-out way that they're doing grappling now, huh? Is they, oh, okay, get this guy in an arm bar and then go. <laughs> like, that's a bizarre... And then the fastest submit uh, escape wins kind of a thing. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I feel like they got to do a better job in that because... It definitely is like... I mean, when every fight goes into overtime, yeah. th there's a problem. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I, I got some ideas for that. I'm, I'm trying to develop something, so just stay tuned. Thank you. MayhemMartialArts.com. Uh, so, uh, Benavidez versus uh, Division. Um, this guy's 16 and one. Uh, got a hit a big win over Tim Elliott. Uh, Benavidez is on like I think he's won a lot of fight. He's he's on a, a streak, right? Is he's um, I think he lost. He lost recently to Sergio Pettis. I think. Didn't he beat Pettis? I'm not sure. You have to pull up his official record. But I don't think... I think uh, Figueredo is going to win this fight. Really? I think people are going to be upset. Really? Yeah. And then I think the, the division is going to get scrapped. No. They're not scrapping the division. No way. I'm just... What do you I'm, mean, scrapped? The heck? At one point, they were going to scrap the 125-pound division. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just, like, roll it over into the women's they division? They just said that people weren't getting excited about it. But then... When they like they dropped like half the fighters or something for just for no reason. Really. And then but then Cejudo won and then won at one thirty five too. So now and now So all it took was a Mexican guy to do the jobs that Americans don't want. Basically, yeah. yeah I get it. Yeah. Uh so yeah. Um so he's on the card and then also uh Felicia Spencer. She's the one that fought Cyborg, right? Looks yes. like a soccer mom, but she took a pounding. Mm -hmm. She also beat Megan Anderson. She That's... beat Megan Anderson quickly. Yeah, her naked choke, I think. She's fighting Zara for round. I don't know that is. And there's a guy named Violent Bob Ross. Have you heard of this guy? Yeah. He looks like Bob Ross. He does. But, uh, he's fighting Steve Garcia, who um, who uh, fought a, he's taking his fight on one week notice. Um, he, he won on um, Dana White's looking for a fight, but mm -hmm. missed weight. Which is like, oh, I mean, you're fighting for a UFC contract. Wait, wait, what's the guy's name again? Steve Garcia. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah. then you miss weight. <laughs> like, at, like, come on. Now, um, have you ever fought on one week notice? Yeah. I guess who? Uh, you always put me on the spot. But I definitely know that I've fought on a week's notice. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. like, like to the point where the hardest thing ever, like, cause I was already training, but the hardest thing ever is to like get all your, all your medicals done oh, in that wow. week. Cause you think about it, you know, you got weeks to do your medicals, you know, like you got to get a head scan and eye scan and, you know, or eye exam and uh general, you know, um, uh, what the hell do you call it? You know, like physical. physical yeah, yeah. yeah. So this whole gen blood test. So that's the hardest thing about fighting on a week's notice. Damn. And you got it because you got to get licensed. I remember you... we had the physicals on the football. I played middle school. They had some weird, creepy guy in the locker room checking just, your just, sack. Yeah, everybody had off. lined up to get their balls fucking molested. Oh yeah. Like, do they still do that? Or no? I think you have to just do it at your regular doctor now. No, I mean he, he's been doing it at the high schools all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm that guy now. They just don't know that I worked there. But you don't work there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the week after that, uh, Izzy versus Yoel. Yeah, bro. Uh, that's what I they want had to a talk dance about. Off. You see the dance off they had? Man, these guys are awesome. Izzy versus mm. put Izzy versus Yo Romero dance off. First of all, we don't even know how old Romero is. Like, I know. He's got like one of them forged Cuban birth certificates that yeah. said he was like 17 he when he was. He could be 19 years old for all we know. Yeah. That's it could be 90. So crazy. Is what I'm trying to think. Yeah, either way. Yeah. Why, no. why do Cubans always not? How come we don't know how much, how old they are? Socialism. Like, really? That's the problem? Yeah. Socialism? Yeah, because you can just pay somebody <laughs> to forge a birth certificate, undoubtedly. So, I don't know. I think I think uh, Stylebender wins this. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think you're not and... really, like, going out of your way. Yeah. Like, you're not saying anything off so here the we, chain. So here but I think that Yo Romero has a way better shot than everyone's giving him. Really? I, yeah. I think that... 
There's a he has the he has that one punch ability. And his wrestling, he beat and and his he beat, he beat Kale Sanderson twice. But so yeah. they're having a dance off. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh. I, Romero won a dance. Romero off. definitely won the dance off, <laughs> but probably blew his ACL doing that split. Yeah. I mean, I just wish Dana would get in this. You know what I'm saying? Let's see a little. Uh, he probably would do the Charleston or something like that. I know I was on the black dance team in college. Nice. I was yeah. on the, bl- the black dance repertoire. Put your money on. You are the blackest dude fight. I know. You're the blackest Jew I know. <laughs> How many black Jews do you know? You. Me and Sam, uh, Sammy <laughs> Davis Jr. Um, <laughs> now Zhang Wello, I, I fucked it up. I know. It's fighting Joanna Janjunchek. I know Zhang. I mean that one. Oh. Zhang got offended because Joanna took a picture wearing a coronavirus. A mask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, racism is alive and well in, in America and throughout the world. It's finally the Asians are getting their racism. You know what I mean? It's been black. Uh, it's been white dudes like for the last like six months. Everybody's racist against us because you know we're evil. Yeah. But six like, months. Or maybe a couple yeah. years, huh? Yeah, yeah. Ever since Trump took over, mm-hmm. yeah, everybody's Before mad that. at us. Like, it's my damn fault though, about racism. And now it's finally nice to see Asian people catching a little flack. I feel like they always get... Like, Do they? Oh, my God. Well, yeah, you're a stand-up comedian, and you use the same six <laughs> hacky jokes about them driving in with their <laughs> with their small penises. Yeah, we get it, Adam. Yeah, we get it, Adam. The same the, six the, hacky the, ones. Yeah, bro. I mean, there ain't that many <laughs> other ones. Hey, but at the same time, you know, I, I, I love Asian people. Uh, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, look, by the way, Joanna has got implants. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a big factor in this. Fight. And big I'm factor just saying. I mean, that's adding, she looks like, so much better. I mean, she looks. They should give before. her. They should give her a two pound weight allowance, Can right? We look at Joanna before and after. Like before and after. The are you really doing before? We're trying not to objectify the women on the uh, show. Look, if you get implants, you're uh, asking for it. You're not asking to be objectified. <laughs> Uh, you guys are dirtbags. That's to say, hey, she's it, uh, asking for it. She was wearing her, a short honestly, skirt. I mean, people are going to notice a difference. I mean, she's posting yeah. the pictures. Yeah. Am I supposed to not look at the No, I the mean, difference? I think it probably helps her bottom line, makes her more marketable, right? Uh, I, I don't, don't know. know. I feel like she's doing very well either way. Yeah. I mean, I think that like. But she just like felt like she needed to yeah, have I think some... Rose Nama Yunus like fucked up her marketability when she like, because she was like murdering everybody. And then Rose knocked her out the first time in the first round and then in the rematch beat her and all of a sudden she, she looked human for the first time um, let's see them titties uh, no uh joanna no bro no, you know you're titties. not into Come tits on. ween i'm not really i mean <laughs> let's see her man. dick that's probably what you're really asking right if she had one i'd love to see it I think a lot. <laughs> nice. really? if she had one you know what uh, you know what i'm with you on that one no, i'd love to really? see every like famous okay. person's dick <laughs> why <laughs> It's, I don't know. No, no just, wonder he always goes to the bathroom with me. Yeah. Son of a bitch. This yeah. is what you're into? Famous people's dicks? I mean, I'm all about Bro, the fapping stuff. Bro, this show is always off the rails. Yeah. I'm not doing it for, like, sexual pleasure. I'm doing it out of curiosity. Like, I want to see what, you know, like, what Tom Cruise's dick looks like, Brad Pitt's dick. I want to see all these guys' dicks. Can we just cut, like, the highlights of Ween being gay on this show and just make that to a mega mix? How many I really have think... in real life? <laughs> not, a, not a lot. Oh, you know what? When I went to LA Fitness, I saw dicks every single day in the locker room. In your mouth? Not in my mouth. There's no. old man balls, dicks. They don't. But why were you looking, dude? Yeah, sometimes you're, those you're guys gonna are, see. Sometimes those you guys have are, to look. Yeah. Anyway, bum, bum, uh, put bum. like put hot Joanna pics. Um, what is Joanna titty? No, no. So that's like what the show is devolving to. Instead of like high level analysis. And yeah, funny I, jokes were just uh, ogling no, I'm just girly say, pictures. I'm not ogling. I'm, okay, forget it. She looks terrible. She's <laughs> the worst looking human being I've seen in my life. <laughs> no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see it. But what's your point about all this? You think she's a better fighter I with I think the some kids? people, uh, no, not at all. I just think that some people <laughs> look better with implants. <laughs> and, and other people, like, you didn't need them. Like, <laughs> you were doing fine the way you were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, all right. But she just seems to, like, uh, it, it matches her body. Like, you ever see a girl with, like, a big ass and, like, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, so Sean O'Malley is fighting uh, Jose Canonis. O'Malley's a guy that, like, he looked, I used to call him Screech McGregor. Yeah. He looked like he had this. Uh, I love this guy. He looked like Screech. Yeah. I mean, and then it has, it has the McGregor tattoo, yeah. but it's undefeated. I yeah. mean, he knocks people yeah, out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I watched Wait, him Wait, what weight is he again? 35? 35. Yeah. yeah, okay. He's, he's a beast. This but guy. he's also one of these guys that always looks like, looks like he's in, like, in trouble during the. Okay. She's pretty hot so, right so, there. Yeah, right. Like that's a, is that her? 
Yeah. That can't be her. Listen here. That's, that's really some expert her? level photography, too. Or you know what I'm Photoshop. saying? Photoshop. Uh, yeah, yeah, she looks great there. Yeah, that's what I'm... Look at them titties. All right. No. <laughs> Stop saying... Listen, Listen if you want to make money on this card, do a parlay of Wiley Zhang and Yoel Romero. Why? Put $20 down. Oh. Because I'm a mystic. But first, I, mystic, I win money every bro, week. You're like zero percent in your fight picks, Ween. No, I mean, I've I love you, bud. Money. I do one dollar parlays. All, I've been doing pretty good recently. <laughs> one really? Yeah. Parlay? Yeah, I won thirty bucks this past weekend on the UFC card. Wow. Yeah, I put seventy five dollars in, but I won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like exactly. God bless. All right, him. so. <laughs> All right, O'Malley, but he got he kept getting popped for steroids. This guy, oh. but he was one of those dudes. That you're like, there's no way like he's steroids. on steroids. Yeah, yeah. He like he Start must have switching taken, his piss with Romero's. I don't know. I think he may be taking some kind of weird smoothie or something or over the counter. <laughs> what kind of smoothie gets you hot for steroids? I don't bro? know, but I, I, just, I don't know what smoothie shop you're going he to. He says he, he doesn't know. I don't think he's on steroids. This kid. Yo, you, you don't think so? I don't think, I'm purposely. Think he's a false positive. No, I think he took something by accident. Oh really? All right. I don't know. I just didn't. Look, all right, let's, look, let's, the let's, pressure let's to perform. This guy. Yeah, the, Sean O'Malley. Listen, you can't tell by how the dude looks. Come on, man. We know that. But let's see, so, let's see also, let's see Sean O'Malley highlights because this dude, uh, he, have you ever seen any of his fights? Yeah, of I course, think you yeah. were, you were in during his fights. Oh, no, but I've seen, uh, I've seen like posts on the internet about him. Like, I've seen a, a lot of red O'Malley highlights because he's one of these also that does everything wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah, this guy. Somehow it I ends know up, this guy, yeah. It, it, but he, the guy also came to my comedy show. You know, you don't realize how young these guys are until you see their, their, their friends. Yeah. Because they look like a bunch of high school kids. Yeah. Like, he, he's, nice. he's, what, but uh, like, why, what a G. why is he get to smoke weed and other guys get in trouble for it? I mean, I don't know if you have sweet ass tattoos like that, look, bro. Look, okay, so here's some of his highlights. He does like some crazy stuff. Watch. First uh, of all. Points for the bad boy nice. Valetudo shorts. I mean, this is like bringing back Jason Miller, nineteen ninety nine. Oh, yeah, this. Shit. Yeah, I totally know this guy. Spin kicky ass. Yeah, this is like a cop wear a kick. Fantastic technique. Like this is the type of stuff that they want to see. Well, what's his record right now? I think he's nine and zero or something. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he, you know, he, I, I think he's gonna have some trouble running to the high level wrestlers. Yeah, but, I think they're keeping him away from wrestlers for a yeah, while. Yeah, exactly. You want to see some highlight reel, you know, jumping knees, spin kicks, this type of stuff. So you also know, also doesn't look like a guy that's gonna. He doesn't look like a UFC fighter when you first see him. I mean, they don't have your power, but at, <laughs> at the same time. You know how much true. shit that I've gotten for that comment? Bro, bro it's ridiculous. Oh, what you're my saying. God. <laughs> I have to not read YouTube comments. I'll, be, I'll start answering them. I'll be like, then don't watch the show. Yeah, then, yeah. Then, then leave. Yeah. Good. You're not invited. I'm like, uninviting nah, you to my YouTube yeah. page. Yeah, and then yeah. I'm like, what am I doing? Look, or, I like to interact with the fans, but don't, don't spend your time like, uh, you know, I'm like, why over, am I, overdoing it's, it's, it. It's every 10 people that like it, and then the one guy goes, you suck. This is why you're not famous. So, <laughs> Brendan Schaub's best comic ever. <laughs> and then I'm like, fuck you. Don't listen to my show. You, get out of my house or something. And then yeah, I'm like, yeah. what am I doing? I'm fighting probably like a 14-year-old. Yeah, undoubtedly. Uh, or, you know, what's... So, okay, so O'Malley, boom. So O'Malley's fighting who, though? Is, are we going to have a good match? or Yeah. Kinda... Now... Now, power, this kind of power, though, this, you're born with this kind of power? For, well, for this weight class, look, that's technique, too. I mean, yeah, he's I'm sure. really accurate. Yeah, he's like, for sure. <laughs> I like how you just walk off, do some weird spinny that's shit. I think it's our friend, that guy that did our show a bunch of times. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? The kid from L.A. that, uh, what's the comic used to, Ian used to manage, Ian mm -hmm. Harris? You what? know, that guy. Oh, fuck his name. Where? Uh, Andre, yeah, Terry on Ware. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like it'll be interesting to see. So who's the guy he's fighting? So just so I Jose lay this Quinones. Out. All right. Oh, okay. I don't really know much about him. Can we we know? Can you look up Jose Quinones' record? But right here. So I mean, so you think a wrestler might just hold him down? No. Well, the, what I'm saying is his techniques, the way he's using these spinning techniques, like this sort of uh, you know, I don't know, I don't even know where he got these techniques from what style they look similar to like some capoeira stuff Trains at the lab but, with john crouch oh okay in arizona okay but when i watch him spar this is what he does and, and it looks a little bit like taekwondo but i'm not sure you know uh i don't know where he got these techniques but the problem <laughs> is is that a wrestler like spinning around like that you give opportunity for the guy to shoot a takedown and it looks like so far he's faced a lot of guys who are you know fellow stand-up type dudes who, yeah who want to stand up with them i think the strategy to beat him would be 
to to get down. Uh, eight, to uh, get, how, how, down. how many losses? Three losses. Eight and three. Okay. Uh, who, all right. Yes, yeah, so that's O'Malley. Uh, now there's a guy also, Mark Madsen, who I believe is an Olympian from like. Can we, can we look up Mark Madsen's uh, uh, Wikipedia real quick? Because this guy, another guy, like they got a bunch of stars on this thing. I want you to come. I, I can get tickets. I'm pretty sure I can get tickets. If I get tickets, will you come? Okay. It'll be fun to go with you. you I mean, is it going to be hard when everyone surrounds you and wants pictures and stuff? No. Are you going to like that or no? Yeah. Really? I'm not saying it's my birthday it. weekend, Adam. I'm not saying it's my birthday weekend. Is it your birthday weekend? Just take Ween Dog. I don't want to go. I've been doing this really? show for seven yeah. years. All right, Mark Matson. All right, so I can't. Uh, he's a wrestler, but uh, okay, he was a uh, he was a Danish mixed martial arts retired Greco-Roman wrestler, competed in the featherweight division, Olympic silver medalist, four-time medalist. All right, after his wrestling career, it became a, yeah. So he's undefeated. Can we look up Mark Matson MMA highlights? Because this is another guy that I'm like, I know. I know um, He's gonna fight at 170 or yeah 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 right. yeah. And who's he fighting? Let, guy let's Hubbard. Chop this up. Austin Hubbard, I believe. Mark Madsen, MMA highlights. Because another right. guy that like, it's gonna be hard. when you when you're fighting a guy who's a silver medalist in the Olympics. Yeah. Greco Roman. Well, I mean, is you know to get to the Olympics, got to be a fantastic athlete. But I mean, how does the stand up hold up? You know, let's that's look the at some of his highlights right here. Mark Madsen highlights HD. Boom. <laughs> got a suplex as the thumbnail. I love it. Have you ever got suplex for? Mm. No. Dude, I, I one time I did an audition. I, I had a commercial for uh and you suplexed the for, director. For like Adidas, right? For yeah. uh, for wrestling. And oh yeah, I was on that. I did that audition too. And I went there <laughs> and the, look at look at some of these throws. And the guy they I went up against an actor who didn't know how to fall. So I was like hurting him basically. So you basically beat up a, another actor? No, this is on the shoot. I booked the shoot. And then <laughs> They can't, then they fired the guy halfway through because he was complaining about like he's this is not my contract this and that and then they brought in like a Iowa national champion and I became his dummy nice. and he threw me for three hours and then they nice. fired you no it was I, I took it like a fucking man I, <laughs> I needed the money and shit but fuck man so if you're if you're keeping score at home not only does he have power in both so hands this guy right here so this guy Matt he also. Boom. I mean, he's got some power in his, in well, his punches, look, too. If you're a silver medalist in Greco-Roman wrestling, you're probably one of the strongest humans on I Earth. I mean, is that is that normal to do that to somebody? No. I mean, yeah, if you're a damn gorilla. <laughs> sure gets yeah. game, I mean, the guy is a damn beast, yeah. I, you know, he's he got that weird physique where you could tell he's super strong, but it's not like, you know, like that. Uh, he's not ripped? No, he's not like a, uh, you know, a model. He's like got real muscle that he can do crazy shit with like this, you know. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, but I don't know who he's fighting. I don't know this guy, really, to yeah. be honest. So you're getting me excited for Madsen. You know? Is this his debut over there? No, or? He, no he, his, he, oh, his he first fight, he just murdered some guy real, real quickly. Look okay. at these throws. Okay. Yeah, people don't understand the power of Greco-Roman wrestling. Like, I mean, I guess a lot of people have forgotten because the last... <laughs> Jesus. Wow! Like, yeah. were, you, were you trained with yeah. Hendo, right? Was he doing that in practice, people? Yeah, but Henderson's style had evolved. Like, he changed... He... he, he he took some stuff and kept it from Greco, but you know it was a very flushed out MMA program. Uh, I learned a lot of techniques over there at Team Quest because the dudes like the Greco is the base for everything else. And if you're good at Greco Roman wrestling, like you can kind of maintain the whole fight because like there's a, a lot of techniques that you use. You know, freestyle wrestling is different because a lot of it relies on grabbing a guy's like shoe, style, yeah, grabbing yeah. a guy's shoe. But when you're body locking the guy, you know what I mean. Yeah, when you're body locking no the guy, there's no people. there's no faking that, you know. Now, when you wrestled with uh, Linlin yeah. and Randy too, yeah, yeah, were those guys? I mean, how did you match up with those guys? Well, I mean, I f the the guys who were like my weight, I did great against. But then I remember, <laughs> I remember going with Randy, and I was cutting to 170. Oh my fucking god! Like I, he just gave me a fucking drubbing that day. It was a good one. It was he was like one. must have been two thirty. Yeah, he was like two thirty. I was like one one eighty, one seventy something. But he didn't just go technique. Yeah. He went no, down. no. He was like because I was coming up, so he just wanted to, you know. And I know where he's coming from because now that I'm the old dog, I make sure you know to to give the. The up and coming dudes, uh, give them the business. Just oh, he to said show them. Linlin didn't shower, and then bro, and then I fucking had to like call training off <laughs> and stop training with Linlin because he smelled like a goddamn bear. Like I don't know what that funk was, but it was otherworldly. Linlin. Linlin denies all this. Buddy. I know Linlin denies this, but I'll tell you for a fucking fact, Matt Linlin, you smelled like ass. <laughs> you smelled worse than ass. You smelled like a dumpster covered in burnt. 
turd hair. Something turd like that. Turd hair. Yeah, bro. Wow. It was bad. Yeah. Wow. It was a nightmare. I, I know. I literally was gagging, bro. Like I was dry heaving, and I they we sent him to go take a shower. Linlin actually was doing well. And then when he came back, sent him back to shower again. Wow, two yeah. showers, the double shower. Because he didn't use soap the first oh, time. Oh man, yeah, he used fucking burnt turn burnt hair. Yeah, now, he's a legend in the sport. What, but, I thought that, but that day, I, th- I thought he, he got fucked right. in that Fedor fight. He was yeah. winning that fight. And uh, did, did you train with him before before that fight? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you were his so. Fedor. Yeah, no, no, nah, not at all. Like, no, I, I, I know I trained with him before that. Yeah, I, but why? Why do you think he got fucked? Oh, because the fight was overseas and they didn't want Fitter to lose. Nah. Matt Linden was not a market. Oh, Carolina. you're seeing how things were. Oh, you're saying that the guy who's the favorite of the wins all the time? Oh, interesting. But yeah, I, I, maybe, I mean, maybe according to Chael, a lot of those fights for Fedor were fixed, but I think most of them were not. I, I, Mark Coleman was not throwing fights against Fedor. I, was he? You ever see? Could you look at Mark Coleman? I wouldn't think that Mark could you Coleman. Could look at Mark throw Coleman locker room? No, I think the one fight he did throw, he kind of admits it to uh, was it Fujita or somebody's, and like he fought somebody in that promotion. <laughs> did where, you just call him Fajita? Fajita. His Fajita. fucking name Fajita. was Fujita. Fujita, right? Yeah. 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 Did Fajita. that fight? Was it against him? That it was like they promised him a contract or something. But <laughs> I like how now you're like taking a trip down memory road right now. Oh, whatever. Who else am I going to talk yeah. to about this? Yeah, yeah, I can't talk right. to my wife about this shit. Yeah. This the Maybe first you video can. Right there. Yeah, right. All right. Look, look at the first one. Mark Coleman going crazy in the locker room. Yeah. Uh, no, not that one. After after he loses the Fedor, Mark Coleman. <laughs> Look at this. Now, is this how your locker room were? Yeah, for okay, sure. Okay, so after, okay, can we get volume on this? No. All right. So. Yeah, I, I remember this. I mean. <laughs> First of all, outfit choice is on fleek. Like, totally, oh my God. <laughs> Was this after they. Listen here, man. After when, they you found you get, fight, when you lose a fight, you get pretty pissed after off. After you got found court, uh, guilty in court, was this how you... <laughs> I never I never got found guilty. <laughs> oh, sorry. I pled guilty. Oh, sorry. After, oh, God. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Okay, so... No, but you weren't like that. Were you... I mean, look at how calm Fedor is afterwards. Oh, yeah. He won the he fight. Won, he won pretty, the fight. Pretty yeah. relaxing day now. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. He's sitting down. But I think if he lost, he'd be acting the same way, Fedor. It seems like he just... Yeah, Not he's a robot. Of... No, sent from the future. Yeah, I get it. All right, can we look at? Is, is there more Mark Coleman? Because it seems a lot more entertaining than. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Like, like on this clip, can we look forward to Coleman just throwing things? Okay, and then Baroni's back here. Not, oh, I know. Not yeah. the guy that you want. Yeah, this is the greatest. <laughs> not the guy. Not not the best therapist, uh, I would say. So, so yeah, well, Coleman's a legend, though, man. I mean, he. Yeah. Obviously, Mark Coleman is like one of the biggest uh, stars of all time, the biggest MMA fighters. He like they had to change the game because of him taking everybody down and headbutting the shit out of everybody. If I could so, ever design who I want as an uncle, uncle, <laughs> yeah, uncle Coleman would be the guy. Uncle Coleman. Imagine having him as your uncle coming For to your real? wrestling matches. I feel and, like he's my uncle. Are you kidding me? Like, yeah. And here he's I talking that to guy. him. He's just being nice. I mean, he's a class act. Yeah. He just had to, you know, he was pissed off. How many substances do you think? Like, do you think it, like when he peed, it just burned? Like, it was just flaming? Yeah. No, you think I so? mean, sure. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, it depends on, you know, what type of ladies were around. <laughs> I just you know. love, he's like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're ridiculous. <laughs> like, ah! Oh, fuck, come on, man. <laughs> Yeah, How yeah. many times in my life I want to be like, ah! You, like, bro, you can do it. No, I, 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 every I day support you. Life, every day of my life. Like, <laughs> you're not going to get on TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, He's throwing man. shit. All right. So All right. we covered everything, right? Uh, no, what there's about? a couple other fights. Uh, Dracar, right. Dracar Close is fighting. Uh, he's he's a really, really good fighter, this guy. Uh, I think he has like one or two losses, but very, very close. And he's at, um, his his girlfriend is the girl that fought... Uh, Courtney Casey, she yeah. fought Felice Herrig, and they gave her the, the, the a middle finger during the fights. It was actually kind of hot. Uh, like during the fight, they were just in the, during the fight. You ever curse give them the finger during a fight? No. Um, he's fighting Benil Dariush, who, oh, really? a guy who like got his black belt in like two years. Is he went up against uh, one of the one of the yeah, Chrome really Gracie? Yeah, he's a really talented dude. Is he? But he, I think what he's. Kind of had like a rough ride recently, right? Up and down. He yeah. he won his last one. Oh, great! He just got engaged, uh, but he's a guy that like like he got submitted by Kiesa. Yeah. And in a grappling match that would never would have happened, I don't think. Um, but 
What do you mean a grappling match that never would have Like, happened? if they just would have had... A grappling match, Kiesa versus yeah, Darius. Yeah, yeah. It seemed yeah. like Darius would have the advantage. Yeah, but it's a different, you know, fighting yeah. is a whole different world. You know, you add the strikes in, totally changes the dynamic. You ever trained with Darius for? Yeah, for sure. He's great. He's like a really at, down at Kings in uh, Huntington Beach. Yeah, I trained with him for a while. He's like a fantastic fighter. Like You guys spar? Really, yeah, he's a skill. Like for his size, oh my damn. He's like really strong, strong kicks, strong punches. You know, I when I, when I, but the thing is, is that, I could see why he lost some of those fights because his speed wasn't up to par with those guys, with the guys his size. He's got a lot of power, but he wasn't as fast as like the lighter weight guy. Yeah. I mean, he was fat. He was still fast, but not as fast as the elite strikers. Yeah, knocked out by Hernandez, who then lost yeah. to Cowboy. Um, but I think he won his last fight or two. And yeah. then Emily Whitmire is fighting on this card. She's a girl. She's dating Johnny Case. You know Johnny Case? Yeah. Really, really cool guy. I just know it from you talk, talking Super about it. Super cool couple. Um, Emily, um, she was trained by Vinny Magalish. Yeah. And then Vinny trained her opponent. I think it was, I think, Rachel <laughs> Ostevich for really? a fight. And she won. And Emily goes, fuck you, Vinny, like in her post-fight speech. Wow. Could, could we get to bring up Emily Whitmire post-fight speech, Vinny, see if it's up. <laughs> it was like so funny. Like to like this girl is just, she's one of those chicks that holds a grudge. She's And she's super cool and super fun. Uh, so she's fighting on the card. And then Darren Wynn, who was on the undercard of Tito Ortiz versus Chuck Liddell 3, uh, he was may maybe the one bright spot. Uh, Emily Whitmire fights speech, but we have the one in the cage. No, like actually in the octagon. That's pretty funny. Uh, so Darren Wynn, he looks like Daniel Cormier. Cormier is really high on him, but he lost his last fight. I thought he won. He fought uh, Eric Spicely. In he the beat U Spicely in, in, that, in, in, in Golden Boy MMA. They, they fought, fought in the, in the UFC. UFC. They fought in the UFC. But he lost his last one. I'm trying to think who he fought. He, lo he lost his last one, and he's fighting Gerald Mirchard, who another guy who like, just he, like here this one, yeah, this is hilarious. So let, let's, see, let's see Emily Whitmire. <laughs> I feel like you get girls this this this, this mad at you. <laughs> You're a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm here with the winner, Emily Whitmire. You got very You're excited a piece there of shit. about Vinny Magalhaes. I don't. <laughs> Against me like five times, and then today I showed up, saw him getting off the bus, didn't message me or anything, so he can go fuck himself. Wow. <laughs> Classic. I mean, that's the kind of girl you want to take home to mama. And, yeah. And, and then never talk to her again. I don't know, man. I yeah. feel like that's the kind of girl that you have to talk to whether you want to or not. <laughs> Forced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, that, that chick is definitely the kind of girl that's like, you You told him you're going to make me come. <laughs> Fucking sit down here. Lie down. Chase you down the street until, butt naked. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. like, you're making me come whether you want to or not. Like, that's a fucking... <laughs> That's oh, I've, I've met too many of those. I like that girl, though. I, yeah, I, me I, too. What a, what a cool... Big fan. Yeah, right? Are you a yeah. bigger fan now that you saw that? For sure. <laughs> just, like, go ahead. Not even letting it go. Let nothing go. Just, just fucking... You know what I mean? She won Hold the fight. Hold a grudge. She won the fight. Yeah, but still... She's got to say what she feels. But he wasn't even in the octagon. He was the trainer. He, he was in the octagon. But, but what he do you mean? He was, was right there. the other one. What? Yeah, <laughs> You're exactly. You're a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. I like it. I'm a, man, I'm, that's my new ringtone. <laughs> I like how you still have a ringtone. Yeah, yeah. It's 98. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> that is so funny. By the way, I, I did a comedy show with those guys over the weekend with the, uh, the, the party bros. Don't the guys, know them. These two Who guys, those guys that crash town meetings. Oh, those bros? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. I love those yeah, guys. Yeah, they were on a show with them. Uh, so shout out to them. They were super cool. Really? Chad and, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going Deep. Uh, those guys. Um, that's Going the name. Of, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, th I, think we, I think we covered it all. Um, let's see if there's any news, breaking news that just happened in the last uh, in the last day or two. So there's no episode next week? Like, my, my phone has been, like, buzzing off the damn chain in my pocket, and I'm just letting it go there, like, wean in a dream. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Just let it go, so, Like, making it, let, making it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what What exactly, uh, what are we going to do with you, Ween? Um, you I gonna... mean, well, if you come to Vegas, we can do a podcast there. Why don't the three of you, I'll get three tickets. I could probably get three tickets. If I get, will you come? Well, what's the matter? Do you not want to go to Vegas? Too many triggers and stuff? I'm, <laughs> triggers. I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. No, no, I'm fine, yeah. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. So I'm giving you a place to stay. What are you talking about? You could probably stay at Russell Peters' house, too, if you want. All right. Well, 
Uh, hey, can me and Mayhem stay at your guest house? Yeah, for uh, sure. <laughs> but, uh, can we come cuddle with you? Um, but yeah. it, would you want to go to the fight? Yeah. So then what's the matter? No. I feel like I'm not excited. I am. I'm totally excited. By the way. Uh, so pumped right now. I'm so... <sighs> All right, fine. Just wait till you come to Anaheim again, and we'll go I to just, that one. It's too hard to go to Vegas these days. It's too hard. Why? I don't have a car. I can't drive to Vegas. Can't fly to Vegas. You don't have a car? Well, I do. Go, I'm not going to drive my car to Vegas. It's, it's far. four hours. I got a shitty Honda Civic, dude. My shit's going to break <laughs> down. I was going to break down before I exit LA. Your whole life is I don't understand. It, it's it's so funny, dude. It's, this podcast is going to blow up. And all right, then female MMA fighter from Romania headbutts somebody to get off the show. Uh, can, we put, put, can we put Survivor Romania 2020? Yeah, I've seen this. You see that? Yeah, I, I, you know, I keep up on my Reddit threads. Oh, all right. So it's... like this lady, uh, uh, basically she, if you haven't caught the video, she headbutts this dude. She headbutts her teammate after she loses one of those silly challenges. And then gets kicked off. And she's kicked off the show, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and the dude, I mean, he did, look, check this out, Adam. He did not take this headbutt like a man. He took this headbutt like a, like not even like a woman. Like a, he, he took this like a, a child. Oh, she didn't really. That no, no, didn't hurt. no, no. Wait oh. for it. Come oh, down. Well, Classic. He might, have, he might have broke his nose. Yeah, for sure. That but was a great you, technique. You didn't have, have to go to the ground. Look, let me tell you, bud. I, I I coach my guys. You know, solid headbutt technique. Got to keep that neck firm and just use your body. Oh, so she, she had a good head. Headbutt. It was a good technique. Yeah, but good should technique. he have? You think he broke his nose? I mean, the problem was that, you know, nose, you, bro, if you're going to get in an alpha female's face like that, you better be get ready to get head-butted. Fuck. Is it okay to hit her back at that point? Nah. Can you slap her Never. after that? No. no. Drop can't kick do her. It. Can't do it. Can't Choke even, can't, can't hold her down. Uh, no. Like, no, no, no. It's just Punch not. Her in the gut? No. So, uh, not a good strategy. Josh Barnett okay. is saying tested positive again. Uh, that's according to a thread. I don't know if that's true or not. Tested positive? I mean, at this point, who's chasing him around with the piss cup? <laughs> McDonald's? I, I don't think <laughs> I don't he, understand. I, McDonald's. Wasn't he, didn't he, on the first time he did steroids, was because he didn't like the way he looked, like his body? Like, I don't think he was, Listen, he was like a pretty straight up He's a guy. real smart dude. And like, I, I am sure he understands the physiological effects of steroids can have a positive outlook. I mean, a positive yeah. outcome on your athletic performance. But at the same time, you know, I, I don't understand who's testing him now. What, who well, is he, he fighting he, for? He's in Bellator. I know, but in Bellator, piss test him, win. Like, is he having a fight right now? Like, did he just have a fight? Uh, I, I no, haven't heard anything coming about up. that. No, he had, oh, he had so a they, fight. They're, pre, had they're pre-screening. Yeah. Now. Okay. Well, I mean, that's good, I guess. But at the I same time. That positive. Oh, come on, Josh. <laughs> what do I, you I don't mean? know. I don't know. I, I just, Josh doesn't need that shit. Josh just doesn't need fucking. I mean, he's man. getting older, you know, and it's like very, it's a lot more difficult to do, you know, mixed martial arts at a high level. You know, and, and he probably has that in he's, his he's mind. He's and it's not Hany, like he's, he's been, fighting Hany Marcus. But he's not been like a stranger to to illicit substances before. So, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's a it's a strange thing. I know I get where you're coming from, but at the same time, like how angry can we be? I'm not angry. I just don't I just I like Josh Barnett a lot. Yeah. You know, and I hate to see him have it's already hard enough to have a fight coming up, prepare and then he's he was te- he got kicked out of the UFC, but yeah. then he sued, and I don't know. It was a big mess, I know. Yeah. And I I just hate to see Josh have to do all this other shit versus just getting in there and fighting. Yeah, it yeah. just seems like a lot of a lot of things that I, whether you know I I don't know I don't know what happened. Yeah. I What's the deal not, with the probably... Gucci belt though? Enough about Josh Barnett. Well, you got Gucci belt at the top of the list. I didn't hear anything about a Gucci yeah, belt we, this podcast. We, you know, oh. No, that's to somebody else. That's a different. That's a, my. No, I okay, I'm gonna edit that right. part out so, uh, too. I guess. Uh, great. I, that was the, the, way that to was, derail the podcast. We're not bro. editing anything out, bro. Right. So what do we got uh, coming up? Um, go follow me on social media at the Ween Dog W E E N D A W G. That's also on TikTok, and I'm also gonna open up like a self help, like relationship uh, helpline <laughs> email. Because fans are there emailing me for like their for love life advice. You know, they got some kinky stuff they want to talk about. You know, you're going to email me. I'm gonna Is open this open this. already? It's not open yet. <laughs> I'm going to open out, uh, probably today. I seem like an official like email for these people. Though. I can't be like in my main email. Like, people love your rapping, by the way. You yeah. know, it's only I'm, I'm working on the album. It's, I've been working on the same song for like three years. What's the song uh, called? I don't want to give away too much stuff. I don't, I, don't have it, I don't have it patented you, yet. Last time you said you got a small dick. And it tastes like shit, right? That was that was the name of the that was the lyric. I, yeah, I've added that's on the chorus, that right? I got a small dick. It smells like shit, and I like to fuck in 
suck midget dicks. I don't know. <laughs> I'm when I run for president someday, they're gonna pull this up, <laughs> and then I'm just gonna have to fucking deal with. I don't know what I'm gonna do. You like to suck midget dicks? I like to take the things that occurred like during the day and like put them in my raps. Like when the podcast <laughs> first started, we talked about the midget kid, and that's just, it came up to my head or in my head. I don't At know. what point did sucking midget dick come up during your day? I just, <laughs> and by the way, that dicks. midget is nine years old, <laughs> so you're getting a Talk little bit. Talk about Brad Williams. Talk right, about Brad Williams. Now we're, okay, well, Mayhem, what do you got coming up? Yeah, MayhemMartialArt.com is like popping off, and I'm like starting to really like flush that website out. So right. you know. So if I'm a guy you, and I want to hire Mayhem to come to yeah, my log on to the website, bud. Okay. Yeah. Hire you. Yeah. I know people in so some guy that wants you to come to San Antonio. Keeps oh really? Up. Yeah, yeah. Kick ass. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think actually, I think I'm talking to him. Uh, not yeah, it's outside of San Antonio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so great. I'm I am talking to guys about yeah, and I got my students here in California, so you know things are trucking along. You know, I love it. Well, listen, keep telling everyone about the podcast. I know last week we got thirty thousand on nice, YouTube, nice on top of the whatever, many on you know everything else. Uh, also, uh, I will be in Waterford, Michigan this week, um, doing comedy at One Night Stands next week, Monday to Sunday. At uh, at the Stratosphere or the Strat, it's called Monday to Sunday. Monday to Sunday. Damn, yeah, all yeah. week, bud. Yeah, that's why. So I, next week, all week, you're gonna be in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I would oh. let, I, you guys come. We could do the podcast there. Where are we gonna record the thing? I, I have my stuff. Oh, it's, okay. it's, it won't be on. It won't be. Uh, we could actually put a camera, but or <laughs> some webcams. It won't be as good as this. No, me, me and Jason will come here and we'll Skype you on the. If we'll you guys Skype want to do that, you. we could totally do that. Really? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we could do that. 100 percent do that. Uh, or and then you could yeah I'm I'm down for that that'd be fun okay um and then also I will be at the right there the Looney I'll be at the uh, March 10th oh yeah at the clubhouse in Placentia um I'm at the Looney Bin in Wichita Kansas March 12th to the 14th Comedy Cast Chattanooga March 19th to the 22nd and then I will be on a, a carnival cruise ship but I don't think I'm gonna do that <laughs> right now <laughs> it seems really like, it seems like they really want me all I, I guess every comment was to turn them down because they're like hey want to do this week next week this week I'm like oh, okay fucking Wu -Tang and then I'm at the, uh, the 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 black box theater in Boca Raton and then um yeah that that's coming up and then May I'm at the blue room in uh in Missouri and you know what this this, this podcast keeps growing in popularity. We're taking this on the road. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. Yeah, I'm yeah. fucking not kidding. I know that uh, Callan and Shaw did that with the fighter and the kid. Uh, we're taking this on the road. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, I'm down. But you guys got to keep telling everyone to listen to the podcast. Go on Reddit. Put it on Twitter. Put it on the underground. Put it on Sherdog. Sure because when I do it, I look like fucking desperate. So you guys <laughs> should do that. Okay. Uh, and uh, thank you. You guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Trap, sauce, and trap, don't trap.